<coughs> All right, good evening, everybody. I'm going to call the Tony Park and Recreation District December board meeting in this session. Uh, Aaron, if you please let it lead us in the pledge of allegiance. Please stand and join me. <coughs> Friends of property, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, before we approve the agenda, I'm going to ask the new board members to please come up and we'll swear the two new board members and the uh, re-elected board member into office. So I'll give you guys. Oh, sorry, that's correction. That's fine. Take your name tag off because thanks, Karen. <laughs> the home frame it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Oh, sweet. Oh, look at that. Fancy. Yeah. This one's a tight fit. No. Thanks, Aaron. All right, guys. Um, so basically, um, you guys are going to do it all at the same time. So um, when I, you guys will just kind of repeat after me. Um, so when you know after I say I state your name, you guys will each state your name, and we'll continue on through there. When you're when we're done reading through it, we'll sign it, um, and we'll call it good. So uh, I'll read this first part. This is for the office of the Tony Park and Recreation District Board Member. Uh, so please re repeat after me. I state your name. Um, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm that I will support. Or affirm that I will support. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. <coughs> against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will, I will well and faithfully <coughs> discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Okay, then we'll move on. We'll go back to item two, and then we'll, uh, once we get to item 8.1, then we'll... Um, appoint, I go to board position appointments. Um, so first, first uh, item number two, uh, I'll ask for an approval of the agenda. I have an objection. Okay, uh, I think that kind of came at the same time. We'll go with the motion, and then you can see your objection during the comment period. Okay, so you have a motion. I'll second that motion. Discussion amongst the board. Yes, I have an objection to the agenda. Um, as, as you've seen the last minutes, I requested a consideration of what TPRD's withdrawal from the CSD, not a discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, I did not agree to this change, as we've done in past practice. So I think it's a little out of decorum. And I want to remind the board that any item on the agenda, it's on the agenda is still an action. Okay. Okay. Um, any discussion amongst the public? Um, can I say oh, something? Yes. I think that uh, in this conflicts with something that I got online in the, in the packet where it did say consideration. Mm -hmm. I think one online was the same as this one. Is it should it? have been. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Just for discussion only. Okay. Is the agenda that the public has the same as what you have? It says no, it's not in here. So um, yours doesn't have a copy. Oh, is there a new one that's been posted since in the last 72 hours? Yes. I'm, I apologize. But if it's been posted within the last 72 hours, it's not. When was this posted, James? I because I got this one when it was posted. Or I don't know what you mean. You need to know to be able to, to take action on a new agenda. Correct. It needed 72 hours posting. Mm -hmm. I believe it was done on Saturday afternoon. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. So it was posted Saturday afternoon. Which you need a decision on Okay. <coughs> Is there a new agenda available for us to see? Yes, you can print one. If you need be. Thank you. Any other board discussion before I open it to the public? Public comment? Okay, I'll bring it back to the oh, board. Oh. Um, uh, on approval of the agenda? On approval of the agenda? That's what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, so I'll call, come back here and call for um, a vote. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 
I didn't hear you, Mark or Marty. Aye. All right. Mark did. I'm going to abstain because I okay. wasn't here. Okay. And I, don't, I can't find in the minutes where that the difference is, but I agree with uh, Mr. Rasmussen that it is on the agenda, so it should be an actionable item. Okay. Are you a yay or nay? Yeah. Okay. Passes four with one abstention. Uh, okay, item three, <coughs> opportunity for members of the public to address the board. Brief. Brief and not something on the agenda. I was the one that called to attention to the county that um, certain people did not get ballots for this district. Mm. So I think you all are aware of that by now. But um, just it, I, I just encourage that you um, consider just asking elections if there's been a full audit to make sure. It turns out it had been 10 years. It was stated differently, but it had been 10 years since it was caught that um, those of us that weren't getting the ballots mm -hmm. in the district. So um, it'd really be awesome if each of the special districts asked elections to audit. And the way they do that is they go to the tax taxpayer, or excuse me, to the tax assessor, and see which ones of us, if it if it meets the same, same name list and same address list as elections. So that way we all get a chance to elect. Um, the people running for the board and that's just a neutral statement and i just want to encourage it it was an oversight it was a mistake it wasn't anything intentional but it was actually 10 years running and i wow. and i caught it so well, good for you. Thank you. Um, i just want to encourage you to maybe ask if they can audit any of your districts that any of you are involved in and make sure that everybody's getting the voting the, the voting records so I that's agree. all thank you for that comment and i think we could probably follow up with that is this item not on the agenda? Yes. Uh, I have one comment. Uh, I think the board should work towards, uh, you guys have already been working towards, but I think the lighting district money that the county's been holding, I think the board needs to work even more towards in getting that money because uh, that's supposed to go to Walton City and the county's been keeping it for themselves. And uh, maybe you guys could send a letter at a future meeting to the county or something like that and ask for that money that is for our town. Thank you. So are we coming to or just about Okay. 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 Any other uh, members of the <coughs> address the board on an item not on the agenda? Yeah, I would just want to say that staff doing a great job. Parking looks really good. Just, just great job. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Thanks. Any other? Seeing none, I'll move on to the consent agenda. So for the new board members, what we typically do is um, in previous, we'll look at the consent agenda and we, we can either approve it all as one or if there's questions, we can do them individually if there's disagreement on other ones. Um, uh, so that's just kind of how we run that process. So um, what I'll do is ask for a motion to approve, approve the items in the consent agenda. I have a um, disagreement okay. with the minutes. Okay, so we can go to item 4.1, so we'll do them individually. So item 4.1 with the minutes. On the minutes under under nine, I think it should reflect that there was a discussion between Jake, Gretchen, and Ken to have me removed. I think that needs to be. Noted. I never made that, that decision. That was not correct. That's not true. Removed from this board. Yes. I never made that comment. Well, okay. Well, we, can we have a recording. Yeah, we can play we can it if you would like. Play it, play it back. Yeah. Because under when I after I requested consideration for T for the of TPRD to be withdrawn from the CSD, the discussion ensued between three board members and a public member to have me removed. That's not correct. I never said you should be removed. Did you say anything like that, Ken? Censured. Oh, you wanted to censor. You were the one that brought it up. Like, mm -hmm. can you, re would you mind saying to other people what you said? A board member, <coughs> I think it's out there, he approached uh, our supervisor and asked that he withdraw uh, the board recommendation to be part of the CSD or research the CSD or move forward with that process. He did not have the authority of the board. He was acting individually, which is 100% out of the scope of his responsibilities or duties. He had no business doing that, and we don't have the authority to remove him, but we definitely have the ability to request censorship, which is you know, an actionable thing that basically say you, you misbehaved and that have a public record showing that. That there was somebody who misbehaved and didn't act appropriately as a board member, um, which to me is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have five board members, and if uh, the board votes three to two, or four to one, or five to nothing, that's what the recommendation of the board is, whether I like it or not. I don't have the authority to go to county council and tell them to do something different, but to go to my supervisor and say, please withdraw that, which is what he did. Um, highly inappropriate, and that needs to be known to the public, and now it is. So everybody in this room <laughs> knows that now, and there's not but anybody here on the last meeting, for the most part, so. Um, but I think that uh, that goes to I would take it, take it further, but I, it was highly inappropriate and frankly, uh, 
I don't appreciate that. I, I wouldn't do that as a board member. Did not do that as a board member. Uh, and that's why I brought it up, is so the public and the board would know that that worked. I think that is a problem. So I'm making a motion to amend the minutes to reflect that discussion. Okay. Do I have a second? Hold on. Do I have a second? <coughs> Hearing no second, we'll, do I have another motion on the item to approve the minutes? Or? I move to approve the minutes as they are. I will second that motion. motion. Um, I'll open it up for further board discussion. I'd just like to say that we discuss a lot of things here, and it is all on tape. And not everything is recorded in the minutes, because what's recorded in the minutes is actually what happened in the end after all the discussion. It's not a commentary. It's not a, you know, a diary of everything that happened. We're happy you're here. We want everybody to be involved. We want everybody to know the facts. And the facts are, I do not ask that Aaron be removed. Respect him as a board member. I disagree with him. But to put words in my mouth is wrong. Thank you. Um, if Aaron, I would love to sit down and listen to the tape with you, and we can look at that. And if I am wrong for some reason, I will uh, address it at the next board meeting. Because I agree that removing a board member, you can't legally do that. So um, the worst case would be a censorship. And that's what I think the intent of that conversation was from who uh, Kenny brought it up. Um, but I'm more than willing to sit down with you and listen to it. And um, if there was anything wrong said, I would apologize. <coughs> uh, I'll open it up to public comment. I would just like to say that censorship goes against the right of freedom of speech. So I think it was highly inappropriate to even suggest that to Aaron, calling for censorship. He is a board member. He was put onto that position. He, he is entitled to his opinion as a United States citizen and telling his supervisors what he thinks. So I think that was inappropriate that that was done. And I think the people who voted and said to have censorship basically for his thinking, his thoughts, they should um, say sorry to Aaron. And that's my thought on that. Thank you. I'd have to say that, that it is in the law that you can't censure a board member. And if you are acting on behalf of as a board member when you discuss something that goes against the will of the board, that, in my opinion, calls for those grounds. But censure, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. Censure has a legal meaning. That's two different it words. is not censorship. Right. To censure someone is to make aware that something inappropriate has been done. It is not to say you can't have your say. Censorship is completely different. Censorship goes against free speech. We don't censor. The speech of anyone here, what was called for was that there should be a censure of an action. It's different, completely different. And okay. being censured is the exact same thing that happens in our Senate and our Congress with yeah. congressmen and senators. If they misbehave, they can't be removed, but they get censured. It doesn't mean they don't have an opinion, but how they have a right to say what they want to say. It's the same type of action. It's exactly what that is. It has nothing to do with your constitutional right. Any other public discussion? Um, I was at the meeting, you weren't here, but also what was brought up is that Aaron on his own, or I don't know if he acted as a board member, but he went to the Park and Re uh, Cemetery board meeting and um, actually uh, got them into a fren frenzy or whatever, and they actually called a special meeting that cost the district, the Park and uh, Cemetery district, $500 because each board member received a $100 stipend and staff to be there to, um, write a, uh, to rewrite an additional letter to uh, LAFCO because uh, I had mentioned in the LAFCO meeting that the grand jury and LAFCO itself in the past had recommended the cemetery district be um, included in a CSD. It's a, a grand jury and LAFCO recommendation that was done in the past. And I'm on the LAFCO. I'm also the board president of the Sanitary District. And I mentioned that that was, that was another thing that he did on his own. Um, and I don't know if he represented himself as a Park and Rec board meeting. And he also talked to staff at Tolman County also. He, uh, he didn't just talk to the supervisor. From what I understand. So I think that was also very inappropriate for him to, to do that. And um, I thought it was kind of strange that the, the cemetery could hold a special meeting and something that's not going to happen for six to eight months down the road. And it's, there should be plenty of time for more public comment in that uh, situation. Thank you. Any further public comment? So, Aaron, when you spoke to various people, did you represent yourself as a board member or as you as an individual, private individual? I made it known most likely to everyone I speak to that I am a board member of Tolman Park and Recreation District. But was it something you announced prior to the discussion? He said he did. Well, I'm sorry, I have another question. Before I let you speak, John. Yeah, sorry. Did you announce wow. to them at the time you spoke to them? 
in my e in my email correspondences with the county, uh, my titles are listed underneath my, my name, which I have a few. When it came to the cemetery board meeting, I was requested to attend. I was that day they had the meeting. I just got a clarification of you as a private citizen who has a right to speak anybody you want versus a representative of the board. And is there a clarification for this? On that? Is it were you representing the board or were you representing you as a private citizen? The one email I sent to Anaya, I was representing <coughs> myself as a board member of the Tony Park Recreation District, representing those that are not in favor of CSD. What agenda item is this? Oh, we're still we're still in discussion about. Is that the minutes? All this yes. stuff. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. We're talking about what happened in the last board meeting. Sorry. I know. Yeah. I have a question. You'd like to have? I'd like to ask. Um, Aaron, is what was the reasoning for doing that? This isn't on the agenda. Well, the, the, yeah, it's public. We'll, we'll, we'll hold we'll hold this for maybe when we get into the discussion of the withdrawal. Is that okay, Dave? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. So the item on the table that we have a motion for is to approve um, the November 9th minutes. Um, so uh, I'll bring it back to the board if there's any further clarifications or discussions on this. Um, hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, was somebody sit, did I hear somebody down here? I said aye. You said aye? Mm -hmm. Marty? Aye. Aye. Aaron? Nay. Nay. Okay. Minutes passed four to one. Um, approval of routine bills, and um, I'll call for a motion to approve the routine bills, item 4.2. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Not second. Second in. Uh, any discussion? Mr. Board? Public? There are none. Um, all in favor of approving routine bills say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Passes 5 0. Uh, and then we'll move to item 4.3 approval of the November warrant. Do I have a motion to approve the November warrant? I'll move, move to approve. Motion by Gretchen. Do I have a second? <coughs> I'll second. Save the mark. Any discussion amongst the board? Public comment? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Passes 5 0. Uh, we'll go on to correspondence since last meeting. Uh, which there is none, I don't believe. So we, didn't, we didn't, haven't received any correspondence anything since. Okay. So that we'll move on to item six with a safety report from James. Or the safety report. There, excuse me, there were no employee accidents or liability issues. Uh, there is no new business and there is no old business. The playgrounds have been inspected and cleaned and maintained for safety. They're in good shape. Great, thank you. As Brian said, they're looking great, thank you. Um, we'll move, or any discussion from the board? Or public comment on the safety? Uh, move item seven reports. Uh, we'll start with the uh, maintenance report. Any, any blaring things with the maintenance report you'd like to inform us about? No, just routine stuff. I mean, fixing this and fixing that. We're busy cleaning up a lot of leaves right now. Um, we had a little um, broken pipe this morning at the hall that we repaired right away. It was just a cap that had split and broke <coughs> um, with the temperature, I suppose. Um, so GVCs have continued to come out, continue to clean up the uh, depot part, which is nice. Um, I'd like to say that we're uh, starting to fundraise for our open air, our outdoor theater. Uh, we're going to be adding a square so that we can accept charge cards or uh, Visa cards and Venmo so that we can take uh, electronic uh, donations. Great. And we've had, had some donations um, at our Christmas uh, craft fair uh, marketplace. We put out uh, a, kind of like a, a storyboard uh, with some photos of our outdoor, not photos, but descriptions of the outdoor theater project and descriptions of the pump track project. And we uh, had a few people donate to those projects. We're starting a um, memorial bench program where people can uh, donate to purchase a bench and have it inscribed for loved ones, those kinds of things. I think we've sold two benches already at $1,000 each, um, which is good. How many are we going to have? Um, I think we're going to have approximately uh, 16. And um, we have got our grading permit. Um, we're working on the roof at Ralph Station. And we also received a reimbursement uh, check in the amount of $5,800 from Capri for past uh, for an adjustment on payments uh, for our liability and workman's comp insurance. 
Is that tied, James, to um, lack of accidents and something like that, or is it just their rates that are going up and down? This particular payment was um, each year in April we estimate what our payroll will be um, based on you know personnel and hours, and oftentimes uh, overestimate, and so we just get a, a refund when it's adjusted at the end of the year, the end of their year. Yeah. Um, but we do sometimes get um, monies back as well for um, a clean um, report. They come out every two years and inspect the facilities. And they inspect the facilities, they inspect our, um, our, our forms, that we, all of our documentation, yeah, all those things. Yeah. Um, in regards to the, installing the new lights, uh, did we ever, we were going to, I think last minute was brought up, we were going to try to uh, apply for reimbursement from the lighting district. And I did not follow okay. up. No worries. Yeah. Just a reminder. <coughs> I understand you're busy. Perfect. Any other questions on the report or office reports? Anything you want to discuss the events at all? Okay. We had Christmas last weekend. It was really fun. I, that's why I love what people do with their votes. This is so creative. It's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, I'll turn the board's attention to the fiscal year 23 budget report that we have on file. And James, if you don't mind just kind of running through how this <coughs> spreadsheet or whoever wants to run through how it's set up and kind of what. Do they have all of this? No. How so that kind of goes for the new board members. The, um, so we're all looking at this form? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is our approved budget for this fiscal year that began uh, in July of 2022 and runs through the end of June of 2023. The shaded column are the numbers that we uh, projected for the line items that are on the left. It starts out with professional services, office utilities, park utilities, and so on. Prior to that, you see three, the last three years of what we had budgeted and what we, our actual expenditures were. And so at the bottom, you have a total, our total budget uh, in the shaded area. The top half, the top portion is our expenditures or our expenses. The bottom section is our revenues or our income. And what we've tried to do to make it a little more simple is to, so we have the shaded column is our budgeted amounts. The next column is our actual amounts um, up to date. So that's uh, through December of eight, uh, the 8th of December in this case, and the percentage of the budgeted amount that we've used. And there are a few that are, are over the percentage or over what was budgeted. But if you look at the bottom, at the at midway through December, which is almost six months through our fiscal year, we're at 43%. Um, and so we, we use the percentage system so that, that kind of keeps us, uh, it's easier to see where we're, we're tracking as far as the you know, quarter, three months in, 25%, six, six months in, 50%, so on and so forth. And some of the overages too, James, those were approved by the board. When some of the overages are approved by the board. Some of them are just simply um, payments <coughs> that we've uh, already made, you know, um, as far as like our insurance payments and stuff where we, we typically have four payments and we may have already made three payments instead of two, those kinds of things. And then we show the balance remaining in the same format as at the bottom uh, for the revenue. <coughs> and um, <clears throat> there's also a schedule at the bottom that shows. So our two main sources of revenue is tax revenue, which the county, um, the county will estimate, give us an estimated tax revenue prior to us building our budget in June. They'll give us um, early June, they'll give us uh, what they uh, estimate we will receive in taxes. And the taxes are uh, like a 1% of a property tax of, of properties within our park district. So we'll have that number, and in this instance, it was tax revenue. It actually, it, it's listed at 184. That was a final number that they gave us. The first number they gave us was 179, and when they finalize it later on, it often increases the amount. But the, the point is they'll give us a number that we can build our budget around. And the other source, uh, main source of income that we have, and it's later on the agenda to discuss our um, county maintenance agreement. And we have a contract with the county to maintain their facilities uh, within Tuolumne, and um, they're currently paying us $116,700. With a 2% increase per yeah, year? Yeah, we, we have a five-year contract. We're in the fourth year of a five-year contract that started at 110000 with 2% increase uh, each year. And we're in the fourth year, and that, that contract is oh, worth 100. Yeah. That's right. I, I should have. 116000 yeah. And so if you look at our income at the bottom, we estimated $334,000 of income and we're only at 23% of that because 
the tax <clears throat> payments come to us 10% on November 22nd, 45% December 22nd. So we haven't received those. Um, actually, even the November one, I don't think we received at this point. Um, then again, in April, we get 40%, and they clean it up with 5% at the end of the year in June. And our maintenance agreement uh, in the 116000 is paid to us in two installments, one in September and one in uh, January. And so it, it's reflected, obviously, when it's um, deposited to us. And so those numbers will come up there down now. And so we also have a general fund balance <coughs> that uh, keeps us going uh, in the meantime. Perfect. And there's also, and I think maybe we'll, we can start to provide the board with this. We, we also track all of these line items in a in a month by month way, where we everything everything within that any one of those particular columns as an expense is itemized, and we have it here in the office. So you can look monthly at our office utilities. You can look monthly at our TUD. You can look monthly at our office expenses or maintenance expenses or any of those things, and see. For example, if, if we have an overage or something that we want to question, we can go back and look at each little individual expense within that category. And it's uh, easy to track. Thanks to Kelly and Spritch. Perfect. Thank you for that explanation, James, for the new members here. Um, does anybody have questions or comments on the... I'm sorry, one quick question. There's a 20000 here listed under other income. What are the types of things that are in that column? Other income... Other income is typically like um, the revenues that we bring in from the concession stand at the Little League. It's um, rents. It's um, ice cream. It's um, concessions at the concerts in the park. Um, other income would also include, for example, if we do our baseball trip where we pay, we'll purchase tickets as an expense, but then when it comes, people, people in turn pay for those tickets, and then that would be put under other expenses and the other expenses is pretty much tied directly to or maybe indirectly but pretty closely to our events, events and activities. yes Thanks. Thank one thing since we're under reports too is uh we probably should talk to uh oak valley about getting new signers we have um oh, perfect we have for you each your form to fill out and if you want to talk about it right now Thanks, since we're under office it is so each board and we every time we have a new board or new board members you're um, going to be a signer on our accounts and this is information that the bank requires for each of you to fill out thank you well, we need to go there again and you will all have to go so this will be turned into the bank if you'll fill these out and return them to the office when i have all five i will bring it to the bank with a letter from the board that states that we want to have uh ken mitchell and zeke delgado removed from our signature uh, uh, signing signers list and we will have uh, Mark and Marty uh, added to the signers list, along with your um, chart, your form here. And also, the, the sticky part is, if I were to bring that down to the bank on a Monday and they accepted, you know, everything checked out, then we have a five-day window where everybody has to go within those five days. And last time they did allow DocuSign, so that no, we should check to see if, we yeah. can, if they can yeah. um, do that. And so if, 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 any, if an individual doesn't make it in those five days, then we repeat the process. <laughs> So make copies of these before you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I believe there is, last time we did do DocuSign, but I, hopefully they'll allow that again for, for I, that. I can ask them. Okay, sure. great. Okay, um, any other um, uh, discussion or support on reports? Or comments from the public? Okay, moving on, we'll go to um, item 8.1, which we swore in our board members uh, right at the beginning. So we'll go to board position appointments. Uh, we'll start with, um, basically we have five, positions we have the president the vice president the treasurer the secretary and then a member at large um, so if anybody would like to make a motion we'll start with the president do i have a motion I'll move that uh, jake be re-elected as president i also move that ivy elected as president okay so we have one motion on the table we'll finish that motion and then we'll move to your motion if the other one fails you have a second for myself i can second that so i'll second that um, and i'll open up for discussion Amongst the board. I second for Aaron. Okay. If this motion fails, then we'll have that motion. This, this motion was made first. And there's nothing in policy that has a, it doesn't rotate yearly. Oh, uh, no, we do not have okay. a, a policy right. for that. No, not that I'm aware of, right, James? No. Okay. No. Um, so 
Um, thanks for the motion, Gretchen. Um, I think it's up to the board to decide, so I'll keep my mouth closed. Okay, so I just would like to say that Jake is professional. He understands the um, rules, follows them, and um, I'm going to say it right now, Aaron. I think you disqualified yourself by some of your dishonest actions. Wow. Thanks. Yep. Um, I'll open it up to discussion amongst the public. I think uh, Aaron would be a really good board member. He really a uh, good president. He really cares about this community. He's been doing uh, a lot for this community for quite a while. And uh, I think it's also a good thing to uh, change up the president every once in a while as well, kind of like uh, Mark said about rotation. And uh, I think you should vote for Aaron. Thanks. Any other public comment? Okay. Yeah. Stood there on the corner so you can hear me. Um, I will second what she said, Gretchen, about Jake's professionalism. Uh, he follows the rules. He understands uh, the process of what a work functioning should be, and I appreciate that. Um, there are rules and guidelines that we are to follow, uh, and I know that he has done that, and he stays within those boundaries, and those boundaries are there for a reason, and I think that that's uh, a very important thing to consider. Uh, if you're not going to work within the boundaries, um, that brings into question many things that uh, would be very important not only to the board, uh, but to the community. Uh, and so as board members, each one of you has an obligation, and you've sworn to you know, follow the Constitution of the United States, take the oath of office to follow the rules and guidelines for the Park and Rec District itself. Um, and I believe that each one of you will take those things seriously, and that you do. Uh, and that you will follow those guidelines to the nth degree. Uh, and that's important. And so because of that, uh, I will definitely support Jake. Not that I couldn't support somebody else, but as far as uh, the process, uh, but nobody else was nominated in this nomination currently, besides Jake, so I'm speaking specifically to Jake. Um, so I think you should consider that, so I think that's appropriate. Any other public comment? Okay, I'll bring it back to the board for any other I was going to say, I Oh, also, sorry, Dave. Yeah, I'm behind. Uh, yeah. I also uh, feel the same way with what Kenny feels about um, you staying as president and Aaron kind of acted out of uh, good judgment, in my opinion. And I haven't heard anything while he, he hasn't defended what he had said. <laughs> Um, Tim, I agree. Thank you. What if, I mean, what, what did it really harm what Aaron, how Aaron represented himself as, from what he said? I mean, I represent myself as a veteran a lot, but it doesn't mean I'm still in the Army. You know, it represents, you know, we have a lot of past presidents that represent themselves still as President so-and-so. Are they still the President? No. He just said, this is who I am. This is who I'm a part of. Just want to let you know. You know? And then went about his business. It seems like we're making a little bit too much of an uproar, you know, a mountain out of a molehill here, you know, and it, to me it's, you know, if we're going to sit here and talk about defending our Constitution, which I did defend the Constitution, uh, it's good to question things. That's how you, that's how you find more answers out, is by questioning things, because you don't just go in something blindfolded. That's how, you know, my old profession, that's how people got killed, you know, so. I, I'd like to say something specific to clarify why I said that I thought Aaron acted dishonestly and it was because in the email that he sent to our Board of Supervisor, he said that after Anaya left that there were more public comment and more people came to disagree with this community services district, which was completely untrue. Maybe there was. Nobody else. We were here at the meeting. We were all here. There wasn't any. The the minutes minutes were, like, it doesn't mean that they had to be here. He, could have, he said that it could have been when he was shopping at the market. Yeah, I just agree. Agree. Talking in, to in it doesn't mean he had to be right here in this building. See, that's the thing is we're, it's like the, the telephone game back in the day. Someone says something, and then by the time it gets back around, something else is said. But like, no, it, it, it just don't add to what was said. It, what was said, what was said. It's just take it for what it is. It's it, it's okay what he says. Like it's don't add to it to make it worse than it is. Well, I'm just saying that if you put something in writing that's untrue, yeah, and you send it to the supervisor, it's wrong. But I'm, I mean, it's not untrue because yeah, I wasn't right. at that meeting, and I don't agree with the CSD. Okay. So therefore, does that make his statement true? Cor uh, Correct, it would. It was during the meeting. Thank you for your comment. Any other comment? Um, you know, what Aaron did was actually take what the board members had agreed on. The board had a majority vote, and he called and went to staff and the supervisor and told them, acting as a board member, to, post, uh, to stop all action, which supersedes what the board does. That, that, you know, it's okay to disagree with it, but you don't go around and go to staff and act as a board member. And what he did was wrong. I don't think you understand that because 
It's great to disagree. We can debate this, and it'd be great to debate it and get the real facts out and everybody talk about it. I don't know why you have an opinion, whether it's good or bad. Maybe you've heard some information, but it'd be great if you came to a public. I think we need to have a, uh, a we'll public forum and get on track. Discuss it more. Okay. The, yeah. Who's deciding? Who's deciding that it's wrong? Did, I, I, did you three? Did you three decide that this was? I was some really kind of involved, a, so. I mean, where, what's the grounds here? Where, where, what's your, it, what's it, your basis? You, yeah. um, you guys talk, your father and son. You guys share your thoughts. So we were both on email. What, what, what is, is this a witch hunt? No, no not at okay, all. I actually respect state your him. grounds of what was actually done. Do we, you know, he, 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 I can write, I can read the email out loud if you would like. I don't know, I've, I've seen the email. <laughs> I'm saying, I don't, I don't, all I'm seeing is one particular demographic going after him right now. I'm not yeah. seeing, no, it's right I'm here. not seeing another demographic. It's right here. So, okay. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, um, Gretchen said, said there she explained yeah. her, her reasons. See, I just want to. I'm yeah. just not clear on this. Yeah. I, I, you know, people talk, and and I don't. I don't see where I, I'm. I've been part of this. You know, down at the supervisor's offices. I've been in the middle of these elections. I'm a Jefferson representative. I see. I see people chatting back and forth all the time. You know, Campbell here. All of us. Everybody. <coughs> what What is? What makes this? Any different? I, you know, I'm not necessarily defending them. I'm saying, that, what, what is the, what, what, what's the big deal here? I'm not really. I'm not. I'm not going to necessarily get into what transpired. Where we have a motion on the table. I think okay. that would be kind of out of the uh, bounds of this discussion. So I'm going to try to keep it. To, I'm just trying to clarify for myself. Yeah, I'm not, I'm and if, if you like, I'd like we could talk after the meeting or whatever. But I, I think we should try to keep it as part of the discussion that's at hand, if you don't mind. And then if you, I think my business ought to be in order. Who, who's, yeah. drawing, who's drawing the line that says that he acted as a representative of the board, or he acted as Aaron Rasmussen saying, hey, you should disagree with this, you know, or do you agree, you know, just making conversation of it. Who draws that fine line? When saying, there's a vote, an actual official vote taken by a board, just like in Congress, a vote is taken, that's the majority, majority rules, and then you act on it. You don't have one rogue, you know, Democrat or whoever he is that says, no, we're not going to do that because I didn't like it. Even though the rest of everybody else voted for it, we're not going to do it. Well, a congressman can still disagree about it after the fact, though. But the votes were taken. And you can't tell votes taken. people what to do, either. That's the not whole point of the um, voting. I'm going to try to bring it back. Just we, we need to bring it back to this 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 motion at hand. Did you? Ha uh, I'm sorry. It was quick. Sorry. Sorry, did you have something to say? It was just quick. Oh, sorry. It was super Go ahead. quick. Just that because you have new board members, any member of the board can call the question on that vote so that you can stop all this extra conversation. Oh, okay. So any of you can say, "I call yeah. the question," and then you vote okay. that you're going to call the question, and then you vote on okay. just in case because it's new board members. Yeah, so they sure. know. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to still leave it up in the way. public yeah. comment because I think a couple more people had comments. So, I'm just curious, should should you be appointed president and your dad is the president of the sanitation board and the and then you guys vote to support community service, would that make put into conflict of interest for you Somebody. sitting yeah. as the board president of TPRD and dad sitting as president of sanitation? I think we both I yeah. don't know, I'm just I think we just to answer your question, I think we both think separately. We disagree about a lot of things, even on the CSD and how it should be uh, formed and everything. We, we all constantly have disagreements. Um, I, I'm my own person, my dad's his own person, just just in the fact that they're both, up, we're on separate boards. Um, I, my interest is, is what's in the best of TPRDs and his is what's in the best of the sanitary district and I think everybody should have the best interest of the community at heart. You know, that's really the main thing, right? It's not necessarily this little world or that little world or um, what little kingdom you want to be in, uh, in power of. It's what's best for the community as a whole. And, and that, that's community. really my. I want to say the community voted them in. I mean, he's a board member because we voted for him. John, same thing. You know, there are people that aren't here at this meeting, but they voted for these people who are doing their jobs. Jake, I'd like to call for the motion, but I'd also like to um, read from the Brown Act three basic motions. Uh, number three, a uh, motion to amend seeks to retain a basic motion on the floor, but modified in the same way. A substitute motion, which was my substitute motion, that I become president. Mm -hmm. Did you call for a substitute motion or a motion? Seeks to throw out the basic motion on the floor, <coughs> a substitute motion, a new and different motion for it. So Did you call for a substitute motion or you just call for a motion right after her? So I didn't hear substitute motion. Well, substitute <laughs> motion is a motion made with an emotion. You didn't make a motion with an emotion. Yes, I did. She made the motion. She I made, made the motion. motion, and you said I make a motion. This motion was first. Again, if you know the rules, you didn't I mean, ask for a subsequent motion. No for you didn't ask for an amendment to the motion. Did you ask for an amendment to the motion or a subsequent motion? Okay, I make I'll a I make an amendment and substitute motion, then I be president. Okay, I make that clear. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, so we'll open it up for discussion. Discussion. I don't know how those kind of conflict, but yeah, discussion. I call for the vote. Call for the vote. Um, uh, should I ask for public comment first? 
I think. Okay. Yeah, no good. public comment. Okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Are you yes? I'm sorry. We got two separate motions. Mm-hmm. Which that, one are we voting on? Are so we voting he, on Aaron or are we voting on Aaron North? asked for a subsequent motion, and so his is the motion on the table. Okay. So all in favor of Aaron being the president, say aye. Aye. Is that three, two? Two. Two. All in favor, or all opposed, say nay. 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 That fails three, two. So I think that would go back to the first motion on the table. Um, any further public comment? I'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. 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 So, so I, the re- yeah, the reason <laughs> okay. I did that, okay? In my professional world, I have a title at the bottom of my email. And it's very important that when I'm doing business, I either represent myself as my professional person or I represent myself as Joe Q Citizen. Um, that does come into play. We have Board of Supervisors that write opinions or put letters out, and they will put their title at the bottom representing themselves as a board supervisor <coughs> member of a district which may not represent the thought process of the board, if that makes sense. So I don't know what occurred previously. Um, I had some questions before I voted one way or another um, as far as Jake, you've been president for since you got elected? No, I don't believe so. I think when I got elected, Donnie was still president. I believe I may have been when his term ended. Um, or was I got did I get elected when he left? I, I, I'm sorry, I yeah, cannot so, remember. I know I, I was I on the board prior. I was a board member at large, I believe, at first. I'm yes, just sir. trying to get. So I, I believe it might have been 20. It was either 2018 or 2020. 2018, probably, maybe. And then who? I can't remember. Who currently is the vice president? Uh, Aaron is currently the vice president. And Aaron, how long have you been? Currently a treasurer. I, uh, I thought he was. We never had a vice president before. We had it was president, secretary, treasurer, and two two outstandings. But um, if I call for a vice yeah. president this time, that's fine. I, I could have swore that was the case. We, always, we, we, have, a we have a vice president. We always have had a vice president and one at large. It wasn't me. And yeah, Ken was the treasurer. You were the vice president. I was the secretary. He was the president. That was our last vote mm-hmm. when I first came on the board. I've never been. I've yeah. been treasurer. You were vice chair. Yeah, Ken. You can look it up. Agreeing with that. Okay. All right. Well, that answers some of the questions. Okay. All right. Well, should we come up? Should, so then. Do you have any uh, questions, comments? You you want to make a motion? Do you do you want me? To, I'll, I'll ask for another motion. We do need uh, two elect positions. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and call for another motion? Uh, yeah, all answers. do I have a motion to elect? I move to elect Jake as president because he's done a great job. Okay. Make a substantive motion to make Mark for president. Do I have a second on this subsequent motion? Oh, I can motion for myself. Yes, you can. To throw myself on the grenade, I'll just yes. Okay. Make the second. Okay, second, and I'll open it up for discussion amongst the board. Aaron, Mark, any reason why? I prefer that it's um, obviously there's a a divide of opinions, Mm -hmm. and I like a uh, a new party to be president, so there's some more fairness, I believe. Okay. And I'm just walking in, eyes wide open, mind wide open. I'm here at the end of the day to make sure that you know we continue to have a nice looking park and do things for the community. Okay. I'll open it up. Or so I'm clear. What are we voting on now? We're voting on president of the board, and the motion, the subsequent motion that was motioned by Aaron is to um, appoint Mark as the president of the board. To be elected. Or elected, or whatever we want to call it. Yeah. Since you went ahead and uh, drop Aaron, then I'm in favor of Mark. Okay. Do we all open it up for public comment? Go for it. Sounds good. Any other public comment? Bring it back to the board. Okay, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, that <coughs> passes. Any L post say nay? Passes 5 0. Okay, I'll just continue through this process and then I'll give you the gavel after that, Mark, if you're all right. Or if you want to carry on, you can take it from here if you want. Jake, I'm sorry, what passed 5 to 0? That, uh, that Mark right. is the president. Thank yes. You. So I'll ask for a motion for vice president. Wait, 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 wait. Did you make it clear that there was a first and a second who would work for you months? I think you have that. Aaron was the first, Mark was the second. <coughs> That's one so Aaron, Aaron, Aaron made the subsequent motion. Yeah. Yeah. Mark made the motion. Uh, so then I'll ask for a motion for vice president. A motion to make Jake vice president. I'll second that. Open it up for discussion. Public comment. 
Are you back? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Passes is five zero. Treasurer, um, do you have a motion? I'll motion to be treasurer. You all second. Second it. Open it up for discussion. Public comment. Bring it back. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. <coughs> Passes five zero. Um, secretary. A motion Gretchen for secretary. I'll second that. Second. Discussion. Comes the board. Public comment. Bring it back. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Passes five zero. Um, and then board member at large leads you, Marty. Okay, guys. Way to go, way to go, Marty. Bye. De facto. So I don't think we need a motion on that. No, we'll do it. I'll second Marty. Okay, seconded by Mark. Um, discussion amongst the board, public comment. Just all. one public comment is congratulations on voting unanimously for all your positions. <laughs> <laughs> really? Good job. Thank you. Okay, we'll bring it back to the board for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 All aye. opposed, say nay. Passes 5 0. Okay, I will pass the gavel on. Use it as business. you would like. Yeah. Um, so 6.2. 8.2. Should have worn my glasses. <laughs> uh, consideration of current county maintenance agreement. So you've all gotten a copy of our current uh, contract or agreement. It's an agreement for professional services operation of facilities and so is the title. And the Park and Recreation District has held a maintenance agreement with Tuolumne County for 30 years now, since 19. 92 and we're presently in the fourth year like i mentioned before of a five-year uh, term on our current contract and in april of 2024 we'll have the opportunity to extend the contract another five years um, that's actually written into the current agreement and it goes on uh, until june of 2029 with a two percent increase each year and on the second page two of our agreement is where you'll find that chart um, we will have an, an opportunity to renegotiate um, those monies and or the percentage that we um, get paid for an increase each year. And that can be a committee of the board and myself, and that would take place with uh, Eric Earhart at the county. And so typically, or basically what we're doing with this agreement is um, we have a, a maintenance staff of uh, two individuals. Uh, one is an eight-hour full-time position, and the other is six hours a day, five-day-a-week position. But combined, we're all here uh, seven days a week. We're on the staff uh, seven days. And we um, keep, so the county-owned properties include the Memorial Hall, the West Side Memorial Park, Jerry Whitehead Field, and the Library and the Youth Center. And so we maintain those facilities for the county. We also, uh, in our front office, we schedule the use of the Memorial Hall, and we collect the fees associated with that and we're allowed to keep those fees within the contract the contract states that any any single repair over two hundred and fifty dollars um, is to be acknowledged uh, at the county facilities management and with approval of the repair then they will reimburse us for that cost anything under two hundred and fifty dollars we take care of and so we're constantly out there you know fixing the sprinklers and fixing you know we fix what we can um, within the hall and the park and the library youth center and Whitehead Field. Um, so if there's any questions, I can answer some questions. My question, James, is um, we talked about keeping separate our request to possibly manage the new building. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, going to be taken up at the same time, <coughs> but separately, or will we have No, I think that, that it later? should be separate. Um, we haven't had it. We've made a proposal for a contract with uh, maintaining the Resilient Center, and we haven't, and haven't gotten any response on that. I, uh, I did call Eric a couple days ago to ask him about that and I haven't heard from him. So um, I can bring you some of the information in regards to that at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to keep it separate? Like, that was always my question. I wasn't necessarily... Well, I think that the proposal we made would include um, to hire at least one new person and maybe <coughs> two. And I think the idea was that if one contract or the other, if that contract were lost, mm. then we wouldn't want it to adversely affect our or current maintenance, maintenance mm -hmm. the facility. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll be. What? Yes. Then another reason why we thought it would be good to be separate is because the current county maintenance contract is so old. Mm -hmm. It's based on pricing and wages mm -hmm. from years ago. Yeah. So a new contract should be 
based on the present. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could renegotiate too in that term for another ten year term, maybe with a single agreement. You know, and maybe the county, you know, if we sat down and negotiated, they might be open to that and might be able to spell something out that was uh, beneficial. And we can go with that route. I have a tiny little tip, in case you didn't know, there's a legal assistance center free and Gregory Oliver, former county council, might be somebody that you can phrase that maybe if you get into this you might I, um, one of your representatives or board chair or somebody might be able to go to Gregory and ask for advice. He's really familiar with the contract, as am I, as former supervisor. But um, I, I'm aware that there are things that could be done that would be beneficial to you, and, and then he'd give you free legal advice about how to approach that. So it's a way to save you money and probably also benefit the district. That's all. It's um, Fridays for free from 8 to 1, and the first Friday of the month is till 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I've used him before. Well, yeah, yeah he, he really likes to do free stuff for the districts to help him out. Okay, that's good to know. Awesome. Yeah, and there's always been some contentious language in this contract that's always been put in basically kind of dependent on county budget they can basically squash yeah. our whole agreement we yeah. tried to put in some some other things to kind of protect us a little bit more but you know obviously those fell short um so that we are you know kind of that is one risk that we run with the agreement um during COVID was a prime example of what happened there they luckily we were able to work with the county and um you know nobody can preserve uh perform the services we perform at the costs we perform them at right. so um, i think that they did recognize that um at least um but i think in future discussions with the county i think we should definitely try and take a harder line on on that because our budgets uh rely on those funds coming in um to provide for our community uh, so i think that's something um as discussed you know we're community county community the same thing as, both the supervisors keep that in mind as well when, when they make those budget choices. Any other board discussion regarding this item? Nope, seeing none, we've got a public comment. <coughs> Does anybody know when the Resiliency Center is actually supposed to be up and running? Mr. Campbell? <laughs> yeah, um, so I believe uh, by January 3rd. Uh, I know that uh, that's when we're scheduling our first uh, board meeting. The, the elevator in the downtown building is being repaired. And so that whole building is going to be closed for 88 issues. And so the plan is to move all county board meetings to the CRC uh, for, I think it's like six weeks. Oh. And it'll be starting uh, January 3rd. The Tuolumne yeah. Resiliency Center. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So, and that, that, could be subject to change. I'm not sure if they might move <coughs> to different locations uh, after that. But I know that that is, that is the plan as, as of this moment, as far as I know. So yeah, starting in January. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, any other public comment? Bring it back to the board. Motion, discussion, questions. Yeah. I think um, I have a, a motion that we can that that would cover the next two items. I'd like to motion that um, the board, as well as the public, is held to five minutes per comment, once. Once per agenda item. Yes. Okay. Second. Actually, do we need to make a motion on that? Because it is. Well, be. you. I think you, as the board chair, get to make that call. Um, no, I think that's fair. The discuss for the No, we call five. Yeah, five. It, I, I mean, that's for opportunities for members yeah. of the public. That's what we have. Might as well. In, in rebuttal to that, my thought has always been to let the, the community speak as long as you need to, um, and we shouldn't limit them on time, um, because that's why we're here. We're here to listen to what the community wants, and not. Um, it may take our time longer, but we all signed up for this by running for office, and uh, I think it's critical that we do allow the public the ability to comment as long as they may please. All right, so I'm hearing two different things from two different board members. Anyone else want to weigh in? Mr. Um, Chair, just Start looking around. as a member of public, um, it, it's it, both expedient and frustrating if one person monopolizes really long conversations and uh, all of us have lives outside of this too. Say it and if you have a lot more to say, put it in writing and hand it to the board. Yeah, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, <clears throat> so why don't we, I mean, five minutes is better than what you get at the Board of Supervisors. Oh, yeah. It's another two minutes. So um, I think that we move forward and like we said, limit them to five minutes. And if there's um, more conversation, by all means, put it in writing and have a conversation with us. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. So, <clears throat> 8.1, consideration no, of... We did that one. Or 8.3, sorry, good lord, I can't read tonight. <laughs> You're good. Uh, consideration River Ranch campground purchase. I can speak to this just on, on for a minute. Um, basically, well, actually, 
only one very young my dad. We all know. He he's kind of um, in charge of River Ranch and runs the lease for the Maddoxes as of right now. Um, and they're looking to potentially sell the River Ranch campground. Um, so if you would allow him to speak uh, to the item, he'd be better suited, I think, than, yeah. than me or anybody else. I'd also like to appoint with you. Have a five minute timer. Oh, here. perfect. Uh, like that means I don't have to try to find Mickey in the state camp. <laughs> Thanks. Can I ask you a question? So, yes. Um, I read in the contract that um, John Ferriani is uh, part of that. And my question is if anybody on this board, for instance, his son, is in conflict of interest, and if they are, they need to step aside because they aren't supposed to take any part at all in the discussion or in the vote of this. So. I have no interest in the campground, so I don't, if I have no interest in <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not on the I don't know. I don't know if that's what the conflict of interest. Let me do my presentation, and then I don't care if you vote on whatever. But this is, I don't think oh, this is more of a discussion, actually. Okay. It's a brown, brown act issue. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't feel that I'm in a conflict of this. Oh, okay, isn't it financial? I'll file, I'll file for it. I mean, yeah. if you vote on it, it will negate. It will negate. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't, yeah. Vote I don't know. Conflicts going yeah. up if this is so. Yeah, I'm just going to say I think it has to do with financial conflict, but also I don't know that we're voting on anything. So yeah. different from this at, at that time, Dave excuses himself. That's yeah. from. Okay, how do I start with last? That okay. Okay. John, thank you. Like so you're, yes, yeah. you're Lord. There you go. There we go. All right. Good time. Okay. Um, uh, all right. I am John Briani, and I, my wife and I, probably 28 years ago, um, when, uh, well, to give you a history, 28 years ago, we took over the management of River Ranch Campground. Uh, it was in real disrepair. There was a lot of drug dealing and a lot of real problems down there, a lot of riffraffing around. <coughs> and uh, we had, to give you a, a past history, James, what do you think uh, this, this board gave the, um, gave the, the, the Park and Rec Board gave a lease to Dirk Hoffman's and some other people, uh, a 99 year lease. Mm -hmm. And also to the Kohlenberg family. The ranch campground consists of the. Um, uh, There's property owned by the Forest there, Service. There's Forest Service. The Kohlenberg uh, family. Which is a separate lease. The Forest Service is a separate lease. The Park and Rec has 40 acres, and the Kohlenberg family runs about 20, or about 35, 40 acres of their property as part of the campground. And uh, it's just, you know, we've been maintained for years. This year, our, our general manager passed away, Dave, our, uh, uh, who's been there for the 28 years. Uh, we're all getting tired of it, and the Clover family still own 160 acres there. They plan to build their own home down there, and, and they're looking to get out of the campground business. And I suggested that they come back to Park and Rec, and I think everybody in the community in the past has shown interest in it. There's a 28-acre parcel on the left side of the road that they're looking to sell that would also include the um, lease, which has about 50, you know how many years left, James? I'm not some sure. 50 yeah. year lease on the park property. Yeah. Um, they're basic. They will definitely want some restrictions as far as uh, how it's uh, managed, as far as uh, trying to keep people on the campground and not allow them to go onto their private property. There are several sites that they would like to um, throw in but keep themselves just as a buffer against their private property. So anyway, I think it's a really good deal to look into. Um, they're, um, I, I think it'd be a real benefit to the community. Um, it doesn't really take a lot of money, but <clears throat> pretty much pays for itself. There's possibility if um, the community get together and we study and get some grants, I think there's possibility of getting some grants to do improvements. It needs improvements as far as the water system and uh, 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 be nice to do some kind of electrical system down there. There is a pole house that's on the property. It's like a thousand square foot, two bedroom on that. Nice little house. Um, there's some other facilities at the, at the uh, it's on the Park and Rec property. It's another house that's on the Park and Rec property. All, all uh, the pole house is in bad shape. The parking right property needs a few little repairs. So all in all, it's just a um, possible future endeavor. Um, one of the things they thought is if the uh, community was interested, that they would like to um, possibly have them manage it this year and as a trial run. If they wanted to, they could come in and take over and run it for a year, and uh, with the hopes that they would purchase it, or with you know maybe as a um, as. Uh, <coughs> As far as funding, they're asking it's tw about 26 to 28 acres plus the lease and all that, and they're asking 380,000 for the property. They have other private individuals, but I hate to see the community not uh, get involved in it. And so the private individuals. Um, the biggest the biggest concern is that it does tend to become a problem area down there that affects the community if it's not maintained and kept open. And because uh, like one time we thought, well, let's just shut it down, and, but it makes it uh, that, you know a lot of things happen off, off there. So. If there's any questions, I'd gladly answer them. 
John, when you mentioned the community to operate it, are you, are you referring to park and recreation? Park, yeah, uh, well, that would be, yeah, one option is park and rec. Um, one of the, the thoughts, if the community service district moves forward, um, that would also be, um, you know, in line to take care of, but, but park and rec is, of course, part of the community service district. Um, we do, uh, one of the reasons, <laughs> I think that time was up, it was, yeah. Questions. James, James had a question. Um, so I think that this will sound like we that. Okay, we're good. Okay. Um, one of the um, things with the community service district um, that maybe not many of the public are aware, um, Dave can maybe help me. He's, this is our general manager at the Palmy Sanitary District. We have funds that are unassigned funds that we haven't needed. They, have to, they don't have to be used for uh, operation of the sewer plant. We've been saving them every year. Um, thanks to Dave and his knowledge of things that need to be done. We also applied for COVID funding. We uh, received $230,000 in COVID money. So we're having roughly around $830,000 in a reserve fund that could be used to purchase this. Um, if we were a CSD, we can't because it's, uh, um, it's, it's part of the sanitary district. And that's one of the main reasons, or one of the reasons that I would like to see a CSD in Fulmer because uh, pulling, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of reasons which I would really hope that this board or this community would allow us to uh, explain how uh, the benefits to the community, but the uh, one of the one of the main ones is to be able to use that money. We get about seventy five thousand a year, and, and uh, but but pop, but at this time it would be uh, park and rec since it, it is it, in the best hope I would think six to eight months before a CSD can possibly be. We've been doing it for two years now, so we're probably looking at six to eight months that, that before it would actually possibly even be in the works. Um, and at that time, if we could do an interim management. Um, that would be great. I have no financial benefit to this one way or the other. Uh, we managed it uh, for years, and we got a stipend for uh, uh, for the years that we ran it, and we would like to get out to what, uh, just, you know. <laughs> and it's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, work, but people really enjoy it down there. And community. What was that number, John? How much for sale? Uh, tw about 26 to 28 acres. We have maps that we can look at, including the park and rec, uh, 40 acres, uh, 380,000. There would be stipulations as far as management, as far as control to keep people off of their property. That's one of the biggest concerns. That's why this is, a, I mean, this is a riverfront property. They could sell right. it very easily for. Is the Forest Service lease involved, included in that? Uh, that we would definitely talk. We tried to talk to Forest Service. They've been so busy with stuff that we haven't got it. But there, there should be no problem. That's the Hacienda side. If anybody's been down to the campground, the Hacienda side would be um, definitely uh, something that would hopefully play into this whole thing. I, I don't see any reason why not. That lease, I think, is only a five to 10 year lease. It, you know, if like a park and rec district, you probably could get a, you know, uh, you know at least a ten year lease, uh, if, especially if you're going to do some improvements. Okay. Um, that is a, and we pay them a percentage of the gross, but if you put it back into the project, just like the one with park and rec, uh, you, you, you pay them, but you can improve the property. So it's, it's really no cost to, to lease it. So. Um, Any other questions? I think you had one in the back there. Two comments. Um, one, being a former board member, I know there's extensive history on the the campground that is in this building, as we've, we've brought up this discussion before, as far as what the profit share margin was, the 99-year lease, how that interacts with the Forest Service, who's who's in charge of those water rights, those types of things. Um, I, so I, I don't know, haven't been here in several years, but I know that there was a whole research done on that for the board members, so that you guys can kind of have your footing available. And then the second thing is, John, in regards to the property you mentioned that sanitation department had the funds to purchase this but you would prefer that the TPR that TPRD would look into purchasing it is there a reason that sanitation department couldn't purchase it and assuming the CSD went into effect sanitation department would also contribute that property into the CSD um, I don't think the, they don't have to answer that. <coughs> the reason the CSD or needs to be formed or the parks district take it is because under the laws that govern the sanitary district. If we wanted to build a sewer out there, yeah, we could buy the property, but we have no reason to build a sewer out there, so we have no legal authority to buy that property for recreation purposes. If we were a water district, we could do it and make that, if that's a water source, we could do that. Certain, there's over 32 different activities that various special districts perform in the state, and only a handful of those are legally allowed to buy recreation property, and sanitary districts are not one of those. So, 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 so assuming that there is no CSD, as this is that's not the conversation at large right now. Um, if TPRD purchased the properties with, and no CSD was formed, 
they would still be managing it and gaining profit share margins just to go into TPRD. Is that accurate? My understanding. Right, but well, they would come out of their money. Yeah, that's they what would I'm have saying. To they have to purchase with their money. Yeah, right. they can do whatever yeah. they want with it. They can buy recreation under their charter. They can buy recreation because related hear, properties. What I heard in that presentation was sanitation money is available. We're in, we're offering it to TPRD. And no, if, no. CF, if, if, CF, uh, if the community service department was brought together. So we were like, kind of, I just heard a lot of jumps. Under the laws that govern <laughs> sanitary districts, we can't purchase it, we can't give you money, you can't use our equipment any, to any great extent. We try to share stuff. Um, under your recreation charter, they can purchase recreation property. Water districts, county water districts can pursue that if they have, let's say, a, a lake that's their water source. So, that's, so they can manage their properties if it's a water source. Um, the community services district law that includes recreation, if that's part of what is LAFCO approves, then all of the general property tax money, not the specific money that we charge people for sewer services, we cannot lend, give, or whatever to those, uh, uh, any other entity. Uh, but the property tax that we can collect and any other general fund money like this, COVID money was what's called unrestricted money from the governor's office, we can use that if a CSD is formed because then all the property tax gets lumped into one big pot and the, and the CSD board decides where that money gets spent. So just like if uh, James charges a fee to rent the park, he can't give that money to the sanitary district, we can't give any of our money to the recreation district unless they're providing a service for us. So it would be a direct contract for service, but we can't purchase property or do any of that stuff unless it's under a charter that allows us to do that. And, and, and again, that's one of the main reasons we were trying to form the CSE is so that we can we get about what seventy five thousand a year right now in tax money that and, mm -hmm. <coughs> or eighty and that we don't need it to run our operation. We're doing real well right now, and so we would like to. I know he's off topic. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I have a couple of uh, my name's Lori. I have a couple of items um, that I'd love to see as a public member when this comes back in, because there's no way it's getting voted on tonight, obviously. No. But um, some of the questions I have that I, I really would like to see presented to the public. What is the current budget for Rip River Ranch? Um, how many employees or what the employee um, ratio or what we have to deal with in money for employees? Um, I want to see the profit and loss statements for River Ranch. Um, the clear intended use of the property in question that's for sale. Um, maps that we need to see publicly maps of exactly what's being presented as potentially for sale and as you mentioned uh, if the Cronenbergs were going to uh, you know carve out part of that um, tax paid on possible property if they're selling it for three hundred and eighty thousand dollars I'm going to admit right now I have concerns about TPRD continuing continuing to buy property that's in the tax records paying taxes to support our districts it will be out of the tax I mean, meaning we would lose out. So if that went to somebody else at $380,000, they'd be paying taxes to help support our system. So we would have a tax loss for the citizens in this area. And um, what you- I believe that's out of district. Yeah. It is out of the district? I, I'm not 100% sure, but- It's in, it's in it's the is. county of Tuolumne County. <laughs> well, is it but we don't get the funds for TPRD through that if it's out of district. The right. county gets taxes and taxes support. Oh, the, the yes, yeah. yes, so the community. Yes, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking which about- Which it would fall out of the taxation, yes. which is what supports. I agree, yeah, sorry. And, um, so how it falls into the current usage of the property um, to be spelled out really clearly. Um, TPRD, if for instance, my understanding <coughs> of TPRD currently, which got the fish hatchery, if TPRD ever gave that part of the property up, it has to go back to the state. What would it mean now if a portion of it is purchased by TPRD, but if it fails, part of this is gonna go back to the state. And how this new, you're gonna need a lawyer to figure out how a new piece of property gets incorporated into a larger contract. Um, so the default of the state. And frankly, as a community member, I really prefer to see TPRD money gets used to provide us activities. I was unaware that we ever used to supposedly be able to go camp down there. Didn't even know about it. Don't know if it's even something you can do as far as a community member. I really want to see more activities from TPRD in this community. Things that are happening. And, and of course, it's bigger than just Tuolumne. You know, it includes Ponderosa Hill. So whether it's 
swimming lessons at Ponderosa Pool, whether it's things, I mean, to think, you know, about some of the other members that are in the larger part of TPRD. I'd really like to have a larger community conversation about how TPRD makes these decisions so that we can say that our tax dollars and our, our district is really truly serving the needs of the public and because people just haven't, I know in general, always made it to the meetings. So um, this is a really actually a very big ask and I don't see a very big benefit for our bigger TPRD district where we get more activities out of it, where we truly are gonna get something more out of it. So those are kinds of things I'd like to see when it comes to a larger discussion and a true public hearing that's well advertised in the district. All right, thank you, Lauren. Any other? Can I make any, do I have to wait to talk to the public? Well, I mean, we never really had board comment. Okay. Yeah, I'd just like to say that we did have a meeting last meeting. We had a walkthrough and an overview of some of our upcoming projects. And so I think with new board members, we need to revisit that because that's exactly what you're asking for is input. We walked through the new amphitheater. James explained what's already happened and in the process. We walked through the uh, proposed pump track. Um, that hasn't really started yet, but it's still an idea that people are supporting. So I think we need to have that as uh, something that we need to do with the public input. And I think one thing to note on Lori's comment is, yeah, uh, public participation lacks at all Tuolumne <laughs> Township meetings. I mean, it's, I mean so that's, there you go. Historically, right, our uh, boards have zero to one or more or a few people, yeah. but typically we're in a vacant room. So um, it, it's great to see public in in the building and and trying to engage. I think that's uh, amazing, and I hope that. I mean, it's, I guess it's great to have contentious issues on the agenda because now we get to bring people in the board, but or bring people in the room. But if you know, if the public's not engaged in in asking for these things, um, you know, how do, how do how do we you know answer what the public wants if they aren't coming? Um, you know, so hopefully we'll see you at all our board meetings, Lori. Uh, and, and one thing I did have a oh. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, could you guys put on a forum or some kind of? I a, think that would be some of public yeah. forum that's well advertised. It's maybe in the new resiliency center where you can, um, you know, gather ideas and uh, you know create you can get interaction um, with a facilitator, for example. Yeah, I think yeah. that's great. Yeah, and I think it's part of rather part than of just coming to a board meeting where right. you know there can be some good give and take and mm -hmm. ideas generated. No, I think that's really good. I think it's part of some of the grants that we're going to working on that is you know a requirement. So um, mm -hmm. I, I do think. More community engagement is good, but we do have limited staff, unfortunately. You know, our budget's not the biggest, so putting those events does, you know, hinder that stuff too. I think, in a sense. Um, but yeah, I definitely think you know this to me is it's a very big deal if TPRD does want to go down this route and pursue this, right? I mean, we have 270 grand in our reserve budget. Obviously, we can't afford this parcel, right, or this project. Um, but potentially looking at different grant opportunities or something may be beneficial for us. Um, I, I think it may be good, maybe not. You know, I don't know enough about it to, to have a decision, um, to tell you the truth. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it is cool. My end goal would be is to sort of fish hatchery. <laughs> that's what I would love. love. Uh, I've been amazed by that. So, any so. other board discussion regarding this? This was, and correct me if I'm wrong, again, walking in the door here. This was more just informational. Yes, so just, for, yeah, just yeah. discussion. So we don't have to take okay. any action on no. that. There, and there's no resolution. Five minutes for everyone. Please. And there is no resolution, so I don't know how we would adopt anything without a resolution. Is it something that we'll put on the agenda for next meeting, or can we um, um, schedule a, um, a review of, of all projects to get public input and strike while the time is hot and people are interested? Yeah, no, I think the more input we have, the better. So, Do, do you have like a capital? You don't have a capital improvement uh, We can't. We, we've worked on them in the past. And sorry, I'll yeah, no. as you are. We've worked on them, worked, we have worked on them in the past. However, our budget never allows for it because we'd be dipping into our reserves of, so, you know, 50000 to $100,000 project just to set everything. So, um, you know, we kind of just, it's, you know, TPRD was kind of formed to maintain our parks and make them better. So that's kind of what we focused on here is, is making the park as beautiful as it has been and, and continue with that. And then as, as we, as staff has been getting grants, being able to produce projects for the public. Any thoughts on that, James? No, that's, that's accurate. <clears throat> so, any further board discussion on this one? We could just put it in our back pocket, knowing that's there, and get some more input. Okay. Moving on. Uh, 8.4 discussion of TPRD withdrawal from the CSD. I made a. I requested this to be on the agenda last last meeting, and I will submit it again to the board. A motion that we withdraw from the agreement with Sanitary to form a CSD. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Or I make a competing motion that we discuss the 
terms, and so everyone has the facts of what's actually in this proposal to form a CSD. I'll second that motion. I'll go ahead and third it because I want to know more about it. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so uh, I don't want to open for comment. Right yeah, because we don't have to okay. right, but we have to vote no. on the motion no, to open discussion regarding. No. Because again, same thing. I have some questions right. and would like your sworn information. Yeah, I mean, we have a motion on second on the table, so we got to kind of go in that discussion. We can pull the motion if you want. Um, I'll start with my uh, my comments here. I can start my time for you, Aaron. Here. Well, thank you. Um, so just real quick, you know, uh, I think it, uh, you know, this is the board's prerogative to make this decision on on the con consolidation. Uh, just a quick timeline on it. You know, the board, the board's uh, the sanitary district and the Tony Parks and Recreation district approved uh, the consolidation in August of 2020. I believe our um, and um, basically the application to LAFCO was submitted in 20 September of that year as well, September 2020. Um, there's been multiple meetings since then, uh, basically in early 2016 to 2019, there was um, exploratory committees. Uh, I, I can't remember if the public was involved with those or not. Um, in the exploratory meetings in 2019, there was a uh, there was a public meeting that was held up at the high school. Um, and then there's been ad hoc meetings since then on that um, item. Uh, a couple months ago, we, we passed a resolution, um, both the sanitary district and the parks district to um, in our tax sharing agreement with the county, we didn't really agree that a tax sharing agreement is needed, nor do we still. However, to move forward with the LAFCO process, that's what we um, we continued with that agreement. Right now, it's in the county's hands. They have some issues with the agreement as written. So there's a meeting on January 11th with the county to discuss those issues. Um, and then- the LAFCO or the county? With the county on the tax sharing agreement. So once the county, TPRD and the sanitary districts all agree on the tax sharing agreement. It would actually have to be brought, brought back to all three boards for reapproval of that tax sharing agreement. What is the know. word you're uh, using? Tax sharing. So there's. Tax I'll hold my time at three minutes then, if I can answer the question. Um, so there's a tax sharing agreement. Dave can talk about it a little bit more because I'm confused. I can't tell the word that you're saying. I don't know what. Tax. I'm saying. Tax. T A X okay. sharing. Okay. Like, Got it. Two words. Yeah. Tax sharing okay, agreement. Sorry, I'm parched. Um, so I'm gonna move my time back to three because that's where it was. Um, so basically, that agreement is still in process. Once all three boards approve that tax sharing agreement, then that would be submitted to LAFCO. And if then LAFCO deems our application complete, which we believe would, they would, there may be an item or two that they still have issue with, then the LAFCO would have no more that they can bring it in front of the LAFCO board 21, for 21 days, but no more than that. So basically, this is, a, there's, this is gonna be a further long drawn out process. So there's multiple months. Um, you know, there's been a lot of work and effort put into this, um, and multiple boards have approved this uh, as as it is. Um, I think it would be uh, beneficial to all of us to have a large meeting with the public and bring ask the public to come to a meeting, maybe in the hall or the, Resil or the new resiliency center, <clears throat> and basically the the people are, who are for this CSD can issue their their voice, and then to counter that, the people against the CSD can voice their opinions, um, and then maybe they can have a small discussion of why they think you're wrong and I'm right, sort of thing. Um, and then we can bring it back to the boards after that. But to my to my, my thought is that, you know, I think we should get some more community involvement before um, TPRD decides to uh, remove itself from the CSD application process. So, so uh, that's kind of where I'm at. I'd like to second that and also ask that people get the actual documents ahead of time so they can read what's in writing and not listen to some of the hysteria that's out there. The board um, at the cemetery district where they recently voted to write to the county that they didn't want to be in it. Well, they've already been removed from it quite a long time ago, so there was no need for a separate call meeting to vote against the CSD when none of this mentions the cemetery district at all. So there is a lot of misinformation out there. And I think we need people to have a chance to look at everything, think about it, and come and give informed opinions so we can all listen and decide together. Um, Any other board discussion? I have one comment. Um, the cemetery is is acting under the county. It's appointed. Therefore, the county can, uh, what's called, annex the cemetery at any point to create a CSD. For example, if the county was willing to annex the cemetery to the Senate sanitary, they could form their own CSD. So to say that the that the cemetery is their own district is kind of misleading. It's only it's only it's an appointed position by the county. It's not elected. Second is if we do withdraw from the agreement, it puts us in what's called an affected agency, which gives us when it goes to LAFCO, they need 
they they only need um, two thirds. So if we're in agreement, if we continue in this application. They only need one third on LAFCO to approve the consolidation. If we withdraw, LAFCO would have to have two thirds approval. So it actually gives us more chance uh, to to squash it under public opinion. If that makes sense. So when, Darren, when you say LAFCO, you're referring to the LAFCO board. Yes. Those percentages. Okay. Yeah. So just wanted to clear. Yeah. So it, it by withdrawing from it, it it makes LAFCO a higher bar standard to approve it without our consent. So by, by withdrawing, the, um, it gives us, it makes the lack of board have to be more um, in favor of it than less in favor. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think we're still here. Uh, yeah, and I just had a question. Three minutes? Two minutes? Yeah, three minutes. Yeah, three minutes. Just a question, that meeting on the 11th with the county, mm -hmm. who is that with CDD, is that with the CAO? That's with the Tracy Riggs. Um, I don't know if Quincy Yaley will be there or not, I don't believe so. We're trying to get Quincy may be there. I'm not sure. Um, and <coughs> there'll be various staff members as well, I believe. And that's not at a board meeting. Correct? No, that's it would be outside. the ad hoc okay. committee. Mm -hmm. which is We'd love to have you attend. That'd be great. Board president from the Senate. Uh, check my schedule. What do we know? What time? I think it's noon. We can get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No worries. You guys we'll know how to find me. Uh, any other board discussion? Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure, Aaron, with the LAFCO, because if we withdraw the application, then there is no application. Um, so LAFCO wouldn't be voting on it at all, I don't think. No, I'm not sure. That's like according to the conversations I've had with Quincy, is that we become an affected agency. How does it Therefore, that mean? huh? Oh, what is that? What's an effective agency? Where LAFCO has the power to con consolidate us without our agreement. So we Which they have at any time, right? Yes. Okay, so you're saying basically we're going to with you're. Uh, if I, I'm just trying to reiterate, so I follow you. Is you're saying we pull out of the CSD, the LAFCO may still say, hey. These two boards, I believe, are better suited to go to each other. We're going to force them. Two thirds of, of the LAPCO. vote. Oh, of, of the public vote. Of the LACO vote. Of the approve it. They need two thirds. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that process, so um, I'll take your word on it. But um, that was my question for you. And what's the ad hoc committee? Do we need to form that committee? Like, who are our representatives now that we've changed? We'd have to look, but I believe it was me and Gretchen. It was. Yeah, it was me and Gretchen. Was right. So we don't have a we don't have an agenda item. So those are two still the two um, members on. Can't, can't vote for yeah, we'd have to do it in the January meeting, yeah. which will take place after the January 11th mm -hmm. meeting. But if, which means that yeah, it, it, like I can't. Be, if they're there, I can't be there. If both of us are oh, there, yeah. we yeah. two people can be there. But yeah. Anyways, okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, any other board discussion? Yeah, I'd like to say, how can we fix that so you can be there, Mark? I'd be willing to give up my spot to you. I mean, is there a legal way, Lori, or anybody, a supportive supervisor? Pretty sure. Different Ryan. This? Pretty yeah. sure just as long as she doesn't go and he goes and we don't talk about this, uh, against other people, you can. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the question is. Ad hoc. Two people are appointed ad hoc. Can one people's person potentially substitute? I'm, I, I, mean, I know what my memory is of it, but you've been doing it more recently. Two. Ad hoc people it's a to, to speak with the last board to go to okay. speak to the CAO Tracy Riggs and three of them can't be in the same room. That's true. So if um, Gretchen defers and Mark as president goes because they're just in transition, president and vice president, um, do they they probably are legally allowed to go to talk to Tracy Riggs? In any yeah. any combination any of two, of them. two yeah. uh, can speak to any member of the board, any member of staff mm -hmm. that they okay. want. That's, that's um, what my memory was. But you're just asking was. about asking about Brown. Whether it's a Brownick violation. Uh, it isn't if it's just two of them, but no. the ad hoc, yeah. So, so I, I, I just wanted Brian to see yeah. the most recent yeah. experience. Yeah. And I'd like yeah, to I'm sorry, say, I wasn't clear on what the, yeah, the, okay. the issue was. Okay. It's just to help yeah. them to, so that they yeah. can do what they want yeah. to yeah. do. So yeah. the, the issue is if you meet uh, with three or more because you have five yeah. member board, if you meet in three, that's a majority and yeah. that's, that's a quorum. And so yeah. okay. as long as it's two or fewer and that you're not having uh, serial meetings. So if two of you meet with the same uh, individual to talk about one issue and then to more meet with, yeah, with that exactly. individual and talk about the same issue mm -hmm. and the person they're meeting with tells them how you two, okay. what yeah. you two spoke about, yeah. that's considered a serial meeting and that's a brown violation. But as long as you're careful about those kind of things, it's 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 in accordance with brown Thanks. So will you please let me know if you can't go? And yes, I will. Otherwise, I'd like you to be there and be involved. I'll look at the master calendar at home. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> any other board discussion? Come on. I guess I could yeah. use a little bit more of my time. Bring you at three minutes. minutes. I just want to reiterate that if we <coughs> withdraw from the agreement at any time, it will force LAFCO to have a two-thirds majority vote to approve the consolidation. 
if we continue with the agreement, LAFCO only needs to approve this consolidation with a one-third vote, as per Quincy. <coughs> And I'd like to reiterate that we have all been through this process for several years, and we talked about it back in the early 2000s when we had meetings in, up here in the hall, that there's a lot of community support for this. I understand that people <coughs> don't know the up-to-date in-writing facts, so we do need to explain that to everyone, but there is a lot of community support for this district, maybe not in this room tonight, but I do think a full discussion of the facts needs to happen before we withdraw from anything. Thank you. Any further board discussion before we take public comment? All right, public comment. <coughs> yes. I would just like to say that I think uh, the board should withdraw from this agreement because uh, consolidation of government is what has been ruining America. It's led to corruption in our federal <coughs> government, in our state government, when one entity gets more and more power. And also, it's getting rid of a lot of the Democrat process in Tuolumne City and the other areas because instead of electing 10 people, we're only electing five people to represent us. So then our representation goes much more down. And that's not a good thing because we want as many people in our community involved in making decisions. Um, and I think the CSD would just consolidate power too much. And I also don't think the sanitary district and the park and rec district have anything in common in regards to what they do. So forming the CSD as one body just to consolidate power I think is not the right thing to do. And also, I believe the majority of the people in this district are against the CSD, because there was actually a poll conducted where the people said that the CSD, they were against the CSD. That was actually on the CSD page. Um, What's the CSD page? So CSD? On, the, on their CSD Facebook page, they conducted a poll. There's a CSD uh, Facebook page? Yeah, I have no idea who created it, but there was a poll. <laughs> I never there, there, was, there was a poll. No CSD. Well, there was a poll. There was a poll. And uh, I'm actually surprised you don't know about that because it's been I I around know. for a while. I have a Facebook and it has uh, so. quite a few, a uh, lot of people following it. Um, Even though there's no CSD, there's a CSD page? Yes, there is a CSD page. I'm glad I could inform you of that. Um, you. And um, I think that this whole idea of just consolidating government, because that seems to be the push, that we want to consolidate government more and more, make it more and more powerful, have less representation. And once you start getting representation, getting rid of it in the government, then basically you just have some people who are going to be making decisions with their own interests and not the, the interests of the people because it just becomes a bigger and bigger problem. Just look at our congressman, for instance. Uh, we can't even meet with him because he represents so many people, he doesn't have the time. Um, but the Constitution says they're supposed to represent 30,000 people, but now they represent almost a million. So I think this push is going on in the United States right now for a reason because they want to have more centralized authority. And what we should actually be doing is decentralization of power. So we should say no to this. You should withdraw from this agreement because this is just taking away uh, representation. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Originally, I felt that um, looking into a community services <coughs> district was a worthy endeavor, and I read every public pronouncement. I attended the information meeting at Somerville High, and along with others, I submitted a written commentary and ultimately opposed the manner and the content of the CSD proposal. The audience was assured that all of our concerns would be submitted, that were submitted, would be addressed publicly. They have not been. And that all of us would be on a massive <coughs> mailing list to be notified of future meetings. None of that happened. What you just said, Jake, would have been brilliant because that's what we were told would have happened. Once the LAFCO process starts, that's not, that's not allowed in that LAFCO process. Good idea, but it would have needed to happen before you guys voted. So during the height of the COVID lockdown, August 2020, and I've got the notes from that and the signed the way it was voted, Tuolumne Park and Rec um, and Sanitary District met and adopted a joint resolution for the organization, and that certainly was not a community discussion. It was during lockdown. And, and especially in, cold meeting also. It wasn't during a regular show. And in August 2020 um, is when they, the widely, it wasn't widely advertised or advertised. The public hearing, we'd been promised notices. We didn't get notices on that. And the one person from the public that was there to speak was John Ferriani, who's been pushing this since I was Board of Supervisors, so 20, more than 20 years, 23 years at least. And John was the board president of the Sanitary District and is, and his son, board, board, and they're the signatories on this particular item. And that was done on August 5th and August 26th. There's no part of these actions that feel like a community hearing or discussion because we were promised a public forum to hear it, but COVID pr precluded that. And this was during that shutdown. The meeting was over in 35 minutes. And so I urge the Tuolumne Park and Recreation District Board to vote to withdraw from the CSD process if it's to go forward in the future. If we have our community vote on this, we really need to set it up during not a special vote that costs a lot of money, 
but during a regular vote when you can bring something forward and put it on the ballot so that everybody in this district can vote on it. Absolutely, I would be really wholeheartedly supportive as long as the public really gets to vote on this whole thing because I'm hearing a lot of items get pushed in here without so many of our voices heard. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your time. And I do want to thank the many people that have worked a lot and worked really hard on doing the CSD district and all the people that have been listening. I want to thank them for a lot of the time and effort that they've done in it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Yeah, John. Um, just make sure we have David Andrews here. I, I was hoping he could give a little five minute scenario of what a CSD is for the people who never attended meetings that, that about it. And Lori, you know what? I, I've gone to fire, which last week, the last two were canceled, but I go to fire, I go to every meeting in the community. I haven't seen you there yet lately. So if you want to attend a meeting and put your two cents in, I think it would be good. But if without, without a common spot to have a public meeting where we can all get together, the benefit to this community but CSD is, is I, we, we will go over it in a, hopefully a public meeting in January. We can present our case of the benefit. <coughs> and those who are concerned about lack of control, I haven't seen you at a meeting. I have come to the meetings, and I have been following Excuse this quite a bit, so that's not true. I saw you at one part of my meeting. So, uh, but anyway, I, I think that we really, the, the whole idea behind the community service is, is get the community together. We have five districts in the area. Uh, Lighting, which is run by the sanitary district, we have, I mean by the uh, board supervisor. No. We have four others. The cemetery is appointed, but it is a legal district. What Aaron said was incorrect. It can't be dissolved by anybody or whatever. It's, it is just as much a, a, a special district as any others. We have five of them. And we can't even muster boards. For years and years, I had a four board, four, mem four board member board because we couldn't get a fifth board member. And all we're trying to do is get where we get five people who attend the meetings, and the public to attend the meetings and put your two cents in. We'll get your opinion, but you know what? We don't do everything everybody says because it's impossible. So you, you have to elect qualified people who study the, the um, situation and make the best choice for our community. This is all about our community. I don't benefit one penny ever from this uh, on any board. Our board doesn't take a stipend. The Park and Rec board doesn't take a stipend. The other boards do take stipends, which is fine. That's, that's just a, a matter of what people think, but there's not even a, a stipend that we get from this. We're trying to do what's best for the community, always have, uh, been involved in stuff. In the past, a lot, a lot of things this community has suffered for because we haven't had a good uh, uh, organized organization that could really get it together. So anyway, I'd like to hopefully uh, end up today here so he could give a quick scenario of uh, what a or CSD is for those who haven't heard. Okay, I'm Dave Anders, I'm the general manager of I'm a part-time general manager over at uh, TCSD. I've been involved in this process since 2016. So to go back in 2016, we had an ad hoc committee of, of the five boards involved. That included the cemetery, the parks, uh, well, let's say four out of the five, the local boards, the um, cemetery district, parks, fire, and the TCSD. The county sent a representative over, but uh, they don't, the county board obviously is a special district board for the lighting district. So we had a series of at least uh, seven or eight meetings over a two-year period starting with 19, uh, or 2016 uh, that were all attended well by the public. You know, I hear people say the public wasn't there. They were, they, certain people in the public may not have been there, but all of those meetings were there. It was attended by all the board members or most of the board members uh, at these uh, meetings, and uh, they were publicized, and we had a series of meetings. Uh, what took place then was after that, then we were asked each of the groups if they wanted to participate in a CSD. The cemetery district and the fire district chose not to participate, so we were left with the three districts that were proposing that. Uh, that would be the lighting, the recreation, and the um, sanitary district. Uh, there are over 500 community services districts in the state of California, out of a possibility of almost 3,500 districts. Uh, what I've experienced here in Tuolumne County, I've worked for the last 45 years all over the state, in cities, counties, special districts. I'm very familiar with the goings on of, of, of boards and elected officials, but here you'll find that many of the seats that were filled were uncontested in this, this community. Why? Because you're too small of a community to have this many boards. You have school boards, you have all these recreation, you got all these different uh, special district boards uh, that are involved, uh, and so you don't have the mass of people that you need uh, to handle these boards. So uh, typically, uh, when these districts are formed, there's either not enough people to apply for them, uh, or uh, if there are, there's just enough to fill those seats. 
Um, the, the real purpose, uh, the Community Services District is a special form of, of a special district that has up to 32 different uh, functions that it can perform. And uh, the reason they, they're doing that, what it does is brings the community together. It gives them a central spot where they can go and talk to their elected officials face to face, and they don't have to run around to five or six different board meetings um, to uh, deal with these uh, particular issues. They go to one-stop shopping. It's like a small city, and that's really what a community services district are. You have a community of interest here in Tuolumne, and that's the uh, purpose of it, uh, is to have a, a robust discussion of issues and have uh, you know, elections that are competitive uh, for these various seats. So uh, again, the other purpose is, is that you're going to save money administratively. You're going to be able to develop your management staff better, which will allow for uh, applying for grants, which, you know, uh, you know, our district has been very successful at doing that. Uh, I don't know how well the other districts have uh, in this community, but uh, certainly not to the extent we have uh, at, at Tuolumne. So it takes leadership and, and uh, people to get involved uh, in the process. Um, you know, our meetings are, are very poorly attended at the CSD because nobody knows anything about sewage. So, and, you know, as long as the flow is working, nobody usually cares. You know, they don't want to hear about what's going on in the sewer district if, as long as things are running fine. But that hasn't always been the case in our district or any of these districts here. Uh, so, uh, again, administratively, you'll save money. Secondly, you can combine the property taxes uh, that allow this district, which is, you know, our budget runs on an operating basis about $1.3 million. So we're much larger in terms of cost than, than your budget here, which is around $300,000. But we, okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, sir. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when I read up on what a CSD is, it said it was a new form of government, that it had the right to tax the citizens. Is that mm -hmm. Every government agency has the right to tax the citizens, but it requires a two thirds vote. That's called Proposition 13. So it doesn't matter. This district can go and ask for a special tax. For recreation, but it does require a, right, uh, a vote. We can do the same thing in our sanitary district. We have a little more flexibility because we charge fees. So does this, this district here. Uh, so if you want to charge a fee, that's not covered under uh, Proposition 13. So, but it, you have to provide a service, and that's what we do. If you want your sewage treated? You have, we charge you a fee to do that. Property taxes are a general tax. They can be spent on anything that the entity is allowed to do. Uh, but any raising in the taxes requires a two-thirds vote per Proposition 13. Two-thirds of the population? Yes, mm -hmm. of the, of the population. whatever entity that vote encompasses. So, you know, yeah, so like if it's a county-wide, like your fire tax that was proposed, that was a county-wide tax. Uh, or it could be as small as the smallest district in the, in the county. Well, Dan, I really appreciate your input on all of this. What I'm hearing, though, from the community is that there's so many questions. And I think that if you guys voted to withdraw, that put the back on the table so that we as a community can really, we, no one's against anything that's good for the community. We just need to understand what the ramifications of this are. Mm -hmm. I just think that if you guys pull out, that puts it back into what we need, which I'm hearing you all say is as a, as an essential part, which is that the community can understand more clearly what's, 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 what this represents. We've community. all been through this already, though. Well, I'm sorry. Times. Yeah. Yeah. We had meetings we all attended I, I, to. I'm sorry, I just, I, excuse yeah. me, I'm speaking to you, the board. And I just, my little vote on this is, I think you should discuss rescinding so that we can have it as a public discussion. I'm glad you are so informed, Dave, because there's a lot of us who aren't. So I think that we as a community have the right to know what decisions were being made and by who. That's out. Thank you. The, the people who are against this just want to I'm just saying. Well, 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 I'm just saying. The like people that. who were well, wanting to know while well, well, the explanation, they left. They well, didn't want to know. We had public members walk out. All right. So let's get back on focus here. Do we have anyone? Any anyone else for public comment? Yes, ma'am. Um, having been a previous board member during that 2016 period and up to I think I was you know, 18, in the community conversations, I reflect or I recall similar to Lori, where we had many community conversations. And there was a lot of community questions and um, objection to the community service. John has done a marvelous job at that time, offering community meetings. Unfortunately, it seems as though during COVID, I moved out of the area, gave up my seat as a board member. This vote was placed, and it appears from what Lori's saying, and I have to rely on the information Lori has right presented, um, that there wasn't the opportunity for the community to make comment on that. So removing your, your position would align with the board's previous to 2020, 
And um, you had, it sounds like there's a board, a group of board members and a group of board <coughs> policies that really was supportive, and that's awesome. I just would love to see that information presented to the community so that we all can be supportive of the community. As we all, we all have a stake in this. This is our community, and what fire, the fire district covers, and what the sanitation department covers, our footprints overlap in many places, but not every place. And providing a CSD would change the footprint of our community members. And as Lori stated, we have to consider all of our community members, not just downtown, but not just special interest. And I'd like to see that conversation being active when, as it was when I left, there was objections on both sides. And I know that was when Jake joined the board when it was when I was leaving. So we kind of have We're on two years together. Yeah. yeah. Have like that flip. I just have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned special interests. What special interests are you referring to? I mean, special interests as far as is it beneficial for sanitation? Is it beneficial mm -hmm. for cemetery? Is it beneficial for parks and for actually the community activities mm -hmm. yeah. to continue? I mean, for myself, even though I sat on the board, I did never. I never had gone on a baseball trip. I went to a baseball trip this year. You know. That's, mm -hmm. that's like a special interest. People who are interested, and many of those community members where I, when I left here are no longer residents here. So the public opinion may have changed. Mm -hmm. The demographic has shifted. Younger people are involved than you know, when I started, and I'm sure you know, as we age, we see different mm -hmm. viewpoints. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I do want to address you know, your comments and other people's comments about not having opportunities to discuss the CSD. The Sanitary District, the Parks and Recreation District, it's on our agenda almost at every meeting for an update or uh, this or that. So as I've mentioned multiple times, the community, if they want to have a voice and make their voice heard, we have that that ability right now, and we we have had that, but nobody has come. So when we come to these things and we're at head roads, right right now, nobody is. Everybody's coming out of left field, right? There has always been support of this. Nobody's come in and said I'm against this, right? Maybe a couple meetings ago you did, but other than that, it's been very nobody, right? So you know everybody has this excuse of you haven't had enough outreach. There's been flyers mailed out. There's there's been multiple things that have been done, but if people don't come to our meetings, how, how are they supposed to inform the public? That's why we're here, Jake. Well, this is your first meeting in how long, Dave? I'm coming here for this issue. Yeah, it well, it's on our agenda almost every time. Meeting, though. Yeah, it's it's I know you were going to vote. Right. So Do we have any other public saying, comment? We voted on something months ago, too, when you weren't here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you guys you figure it out back there. Knock each other out. Nicole, I'm here to represent myself tonight as a citizen, but also kind of feel the need to step in as the fire chief. Um, just for point of clarification, the fire department is not currently a part of the CSD. And this kind of tailors into a question after Dave is those latent powers removed where fire cannot be added and all those latent powers have been removed from the current well, CSD. Well, no, the law, the law always allows for those latent powers. So the, the CSD, if it was ever formed, or any CSD that doesn't have fire could always annex fire in if, so be if the two board members want to. But the reason we were going for the larger group was because then you would have to spend your money to go to LAFCO. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, the CSD would have been formed about a year and a half ago if our local LAFCO would have handled this in a normal process. I mean, you know, I've been involved in LAFCO stuff for the last 35, 40 years, and it's, it doesn't take two years to get a simple application approved through LAFCO. So, sure. you know, I understand people are concerned that nothing's gone on in two years. Well, because it's been sitting in LAFCO's desk because our two boards made the decision to, to, to form a CSD, and now LAFCO's been doing nothing on it mm -hmm. for two years. And that's sort of where we're at on it. And, uh, but always, if it's formed or down the road, let's say it doesn't get formed, and some other district like the fire says, hey, we, we like to form with the sanitary district, we can re that's reinvent process, that yeah. whole thing and go through it. But sure. it cost our district uh, over $35,000 just to have LAFCO process this application. Mm -hmm. So it's not cheap to do it. And so that's why we only try to do it once. But like I said, We've been sitting on this for over two years now. So, so just, I just want to throw out clarification out there. The fire is not in this currently as it is. As a okay. citizen, I will advocate that there is value in CSD. There can be. But again, as we sit here as a community, we talk about community issues and topics. And I, I get the feeling, if it's just me, then, then sound off. I get the feeling we're trying to fix everything for them. We're trying to encompass all of it. If that's part of the discussion people want to have that information about, I think that's something as a community that we should have the ability to do, regardless of we've done it before, regardless of how long ago it's been. People went to those meetings. They haven't been back. It's dropped on people's radar. It's on everyone's agenda. I'm not following it. And, and like tonight, it's a contentious item because people are starting to hear this is happening potentially. So that's just one of those things I just want to throw out there. I do see the value in it as a community. I see other communities that benefit from this. But as, as a citizen here, when I look at it, I see two boards getting together. I see two agencies combining. I don't know the value in that, just those two agencies. 
Can I, through you with the I'd like to clarify something though. When you two were discussing and you said it would require the two boards, did you mean that if Fire later wanted to join, that their board would have to agree with the CSD that's already right. formed? Is yeah. that what you meant? Yeah, it'd have to be if the CSD didn't want to take on Fire, they could say, No, we don't want you know, now that's independent. If LACO wanted to decide to consolidate everybody, there's certain laws that they can force consolidations, but that's very rarely happens in the state. Uh, usually only when districts are in such financial trouble, they force it on some other district to save it. But quite frankly, I'll just tell you that the TCSD is, can go on very fine without the CSD. But it, I think it, the most value it brings is brings to this board here because one, we're bringing money. Two, we're bringing administrative overhead that allows the people to more, be more specialized in, in their jobs. It allows them to get grants and stuff that you haven't been applying for in the past. Uh, you know, handling your finances and stuff is nothing because we already have somebody over there doing so. There's a lot of duplication of services in local government. And CSDs is one way to eliminate that duplication of services. Every agency has their own finance person or, or part of the person that does that. They have a GM. They have all these other types of, of activities. So certainly the guys that work on sewer are going to stay on sewer and the guys that work on parks are going to stay on parks. But when you look at the overhead, your administrative people, your finance personnel, those types of things, insurance costs, those things, they all go down when you consolidate. So that's the whole purpose around uh, forming a CSD. Well, plus, like I say, you get more you get more input from the public because they don't have to run around to five different meetings. They have to come to one meeting. They know who those people are because uh, there's less boards that are running and you have more competition for those boards because people in the community have different ideas. They may like stuff or not. So in my opinion, that's the way way to go in these small communities because you're never going to have a, a solid capital improvement program here, a, uh, a, a recreation as assessment program to determine what you want because you don't have enough money even to do your basic functions. So I would not, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know you saw time. I just have one follow-up question. Just to clarify, so the current CSD application, are the latent powers still in it or have they been excluded? No. The application is that. for three, our application right. is for the three functions parks, sanitation, and uh, light. Mm -hmm. The latent powers, that's a state government law. So right. they're always going to be there. Okay. So they don't go away. I thought I understood the current application that those were, were there but excluded from it and, and excluded from laughter reviewing it and choosing to add it or not add it. You're in it. Here. Well, You're in it. As a latent power. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. So what, what does that mean exactly then, Lori? But all the way, well, if you want to explain all the latent power means, it's the list of what are 32 items. I mean, we could be, right. a, we could be an airport district, too, no, 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 but no, no, we're no. never going to do it because there's no airport. I, I get that. I guess what I'm, my question more direct is this. The way I understood it currently was that in the review of this current, those were being excluded as not uh, addable as LAFCO, not to independently <coughs> add it because they did, the, the LAFCO board did not want it in. I think uh, no, no. Quincy said that. We didn't it. want it in there. Okay. Uh, we, we put the application in. And we didn't want it in there. We didn't want fire in there because you didn't sign the same agreement that we signed. The resolution. With the, right. Yeah. Right, right. But we did list them as latent power, correct? No. Yes. Well, yes. Uh, yes. No. yes, you did. We did. Originally, we did correct. as a latent power. But because LAFCO in this county has this idea that those latent powers um, are only going to be activated at some time. If we don't activate them under this application, right. they can't be activated until another application is filed. Gotcha. So that's where we're at on that. So, so it's written in there, but it's not something. No, actually it's actually been, it's been removed. It's okay, yeah, and then we removed all the latent powers because of the forward. fight we were having with LAFCO right. that they didn't want to approve those because what we were trying to do in that original application was say, we actually listed about 10 items mm -hmm. in that application uh, that would just allow us to say, okay, we have a budget for this and we went to the public and they wanted it. We can then actually, <coughs> if LAFCO pre-approved those, right. even though they wouldn't take effect immediately, Sometime down the road, if we wanted to exercise them, the two boards would adopt a resolution and you wouldn't have to spend $35,000 going through LAFCO. Totally. So we tried to expedite the process. LAFCO said, oh no, we don't want to do that. So we said, fine, we'll pull all those 10 out and we'll just deal with those three. And that's what I'm just trying to get out. Those yeah. have been removed, they cannot be added. So as you're facilitating a discussion with multiple members of the public engaging this, this isn't a scenario where you can just add those in if they want to or choose to. Once it's done, those are excluded from it unless yep. you reapply through the LAFCO process. Right, so you know, on our application, now I'm not, I won't answer for LAFCO. There sure. are laws right. that will allow LAFCO to consolidate Totally every district if they wanted to, but like I said, I don't see that happening in totally any place good. in the state. Right. Thank you. Uh, Ken, you still want to? Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, <clears throat> I, first of all, I just want to say it's very important for every board, fire board, park and rec board, sewer board. Um, I appreciate the time and work and effort that everybody on the board does. And I've been on boards. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, I'm saying it's a thank, thankless job, but at times it is because many times the public doesn't show up, so it's 
you know, from that perspective, it's wonderful that there's you know 30 people here, whatever there are, to participate uh, in voicing their concerns or opinions or whatnot. That's that makes us who we are. I mean, you know, that's you know, you know, I call it America, but that's the wonderful thing about America. We don't have the Gestapo outside going to you know take us to jail because I disagree with Dave. And, you know, that's not the way it works. So this is awesome. Um, and the other part would be that you know the boards, each one of the boards, um, take seriously what they're doing. Uh, you know, they follow the guidelines, they follow the rules, um, they do the things that, that they should do, uh, which I, you know, from my perspective, I have no reason to believe that they're not. Uh, but that, that's an important piece of the puzzle, that, that they are doing those things. Um, and additionally, you have caught here. No. <laughs> um, yeah, we are a community. I mean, these board members that are here today, we voted for, I voted for these people on this board, and fire board, and whatnot, and, you know, I take that seriously, I take my right to vote seriously, um, and that's important, and we voted for them to represent us, to make decisions for us. Now, we can lobby, which is what we're doing here today, and many parts, many of us are lobbying our opinions, which is great. Right, wrong, or indifferent, or agree, or disagree, that's okay. I'm not mad at anybody, I don't want to be mad at anybody, because I disagree with them, or they disagree with me. I, I you know, I think we should have good discussion. Uh, but, you know, as at the end of the day, everything comes down to what's best for the community. Period. Whether it's fire, park and rec, sewer, whatever, what's best for the community? The board is charged to take that to heart and to make those things happen within their district. Um, as a community, you know, we have the right to lobby our board members and tell them, give them our opinion and thank them for their job and move on and go forward. Um, so all I, what I really want to say is, you know, at the end of the day, we are a community and we should consider, whatever it might be, our boards consider what the best action going forward would be. Maybe it's not a CSD. Maybe it is. But I, my opinion, when I was on the board up until two hours ago, <laughs> was that we should check that out. There's it warrants. Us looking at it doesn't mean it's going to happen. There may be good reason not to. There may be a majority of people. You know, I, I agree with in part with what Lori had to say, but you know what? That's about what we do to vote. We vote as people to, to make our decision. And as a whether we like it or don't like it, I mean, you don't have to like the um, you know, the county supervisors will be elected. Sorry, Ryan. Not, no, no <laughs> disparaging against you. You can like them, not like them. But Ryan is a supervisor for his district. And so now I, you know, I don't know what district he is, to be honest, but I think he's a girlfriend, right? No. No? Yeah. no. Okay, that's okay. Anyways, sorry. No disparaging you by any means. I respect the fact that he's a supervisor and he's doing his job. He's all that. Uh, and, you know, he, and he's, for whatever reason, he's here. I appreciate that he's here. He's Awesome. Uh, so that's you know an another good reason uh, for him to be here. But uh, I respect that fact. And whether he makes a decision in the future that does or doesn't affect me, or that I do or don't like, um, if he makes one that I don't like, it's the decision that's been made, and, and I will respect that and move forward. Um, and we should do that as a community. Period. I mean, whatever that might be. Um, the other thing I want to say is this, and this is important as a board, because I mean we've had some a lot of breaks and quorum here tonight. I mean I waited until I was called to comment or say something, and I appreciate nobody interrupting me. Um, I'm not trying to pick on anybody at all. I just want to give a general statement. But we should wait until we're called on. I mean, I, I know that at the Board of Supervisors meeting, Lori was on the board, Ryan's on the board. They wouldn't allow that. They'd ask you to be removed. You know, we can't just blurt out and, you know, that's, we need to have some, as a community, let's be disciplined, get our information that we need to. If we need to do it personally before the meeting or after the meeting, do it that way. But during the meeting, follow the quorum, follow the process. Uh, don't address each other. I mean, it's not, that's not appropriate either for me to call anybody out uh, unless, you know, hopefully it's in a positive manner. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Any other public comment? I have a question. Yes. Um, I noticed on the application it says there will be no change to the sanitary district staff, but it doesn't specify anything about um, TPRD. And mm -hmm. there's been discussion about um, cuts in administrative cost. So, just mm -hmm. asking for clarification as yeah. an employee here. Does that mean like loss right. of jobs kind no, of jobs? Or? No, if it, I mean really, I mean you bring up a good point, right? Um, the way that we've presented this to the public multiple times is there is no cut in staff. And in reality what it means is potential for more pay raises. It would give staff at TPRD the opportunity to join CalPERS, which we currently, you guys currently don't have here, so the, the, CS, the sanitary district has PERS. Um, and I don't know what your guys' medical benefits are, if you guys it's provide health insurance. Yeah, it's, we don't have a... Like a, we don't have CalPERS health. Okay, but they have some sort of health care program. Yeah, we do as well. We, okay, so we have like a stipend as well, so that's pretty similar, but maybe their stipend's bigger or whatever it is. So staff moving from Tony Parks can take advantage of the um, the board, you know, the, the merger and get on CalPERS and start building 2% at 62 or whatever it is now, or I don't know what it is for you guys, 2 at 62. So, you know, every year you work here, you get 2% of your highest three years when you retire. So that all sounds amazing, but how does that equate to administrative cost cuts? Oh, so so we've cuts. never we have never as as this that was one of the things that the community didn't want, right? They did not want cuts. So that was we put together a couple Venn diagrams or Gantt charts that basically did not show one cut to 
staff at all. So basically, it may be something of like, you know, you guys share the responsibility for finance, right? So if one person's gone, somebody else can take that place or maybe cross -training. so you have better cross training. So if there are people on vacation or you may have the fact of maybe you like dealing with grants better. Well, you would handle all the grants for, potentially or vice versa. I'm just, I'm just still confused how that makes, how does that equate to administrative savings? We, there was a discussion that there's savings. It's, it's, it's it's awesome. So you, I don't know what position you have, but I know you're, you had a number of vacancies here over the last year. So nobody, we're not saying we're gonna fire somebody the first day, but over time, people will leave. <laughs> you don't replace those positions if you don't need them. Maybe you combine them with something else. You know, maybe some job that's working half time goes to full time, and you don't need to hire a full time person in that other job. So there's many ways to do that. But I think if you look at your overhead in general, you're gonna have one audit a year, that's gonna save you money. You're gonna have uh, insurance costs that are gonna be cheaper because you're going through a larger uh, insurance pool. Um, so those are the types of overhead costs that you're going to save. And like I say, through attrition, if, if you are heavy in personnel, I'm not saying you are, uh, but the other thing is the district here uh, is bringing money that you can spend on recreation that we're not spending on the sewer system uh, because, quite frankly, we get a lot of grants. We, we're currently got over $5 million in grants that we're currently operating under. So that's, what, that's how we've saved money for the community, by getting the state to pay for stuff that <coughs> the agencies have to pay for out of their pocket. So, and the level of service would be increased. I mean, to the community, I think you, you would have someone that could be freed up to do more, more recreation uh, events. And board chair, what time are we on? Who's speaking? Who's has the floor? We had staff uh, had or night and restarted. So, so it's not a question directed at. Okay. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, any other public comment? Okay, let's bring it back to the board. Uh, yes, sir. Just one last thing. Did you use it over your five minutes? <laughs> well, I think a lot of people used it over their five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, no okay. I don't believe we did. Um, I think what's evident is that there's still lots of questions, and the fact that Dave and you all are coming up with that information that we need to know is evidence to me that this has got to be made available to the public so that we as a community know what the perks are. I don't think any of us here are against anything. We all just want to know what, what does this mean, what are the costs, and what are the benefits? I think if I have to raise a hand, how many people think we need more information on it? I think the majority of people in the room would raise their hands. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Any other public comment? Now we'll bring it back to the board for discussion. I'd like to start. Okay. Can we be reminded what's the motion on the table? I don't think we have a motion. Oh, there's no, no active motion. It's not an active second. item. Could you guys remove action from this item when you repost to the agenda? I agree with you, but he says it's still actionable. It's under discussion slash action items. Does it have to say consideration? Not necessarily, but by prior practices, we've always indicated. But it's it's that to me is discussion and or action. action and if you specifically state discussion, it's specifically discussion. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's correct or not. But that's <coughs> my personal opinion. So, how you feel over it. Yeah, how we do it at my other board, where I report to a board, is anything that's on the agenda is an actionable item that's under discussion or action items. That's action can be taken. Yeah. yeah. So. But there was a motion on the table, then if that's your purview. Which was I got, well, I got one minute left. I'd like to save it. Okay. To the end. Okay. I don't know how much time I have. I don't think I used mine, but I didn't. I have four minutes, and I won't use that many. But I would like to say, as someone who has been here, who has been paying attention, reading all of the facts, I believe that we do not have to withdraw this to go forward and take more community input. And if in another month or two, after we've had public meetings and all the actual facts are out there, which I really appreciate, all of you, I didn't know fire was, you know, completely withdrawn, and I saw <coughs> that in the paperwork, but I didn't understand that that means you would have the petition to get back in. So that's a great fact to know. I just think we can schedule the meeting, we can take public input, and it doesn't require undoing everything that we've done for the last couple of years. Thank you. It, uh, do I have a minute or so or three seconds? I don't know how they add, but my, my main thing is, you know, I, I, I don't think that there should be any action taken. I think we should table any action and we should have a community meeting in January or early February that talks about this. We open it to the public. We have, like I was talking about earlier, I'm just reiterating <coughs> what I said is bring it back to the public, explain everything since it, it has, there has been time that has gone by and people don't come to our meetings. So we open it up to the public, they can come and then the boards can go back and make their decision after that. But like I stated earlier, nothing is happening with this for multiple or probably multiple months, if not more than six months. So as I stated earlier too. Uh, I have a clarifying question real quick. The tax sharing agreement yes. that was written by our board, our board sanitation's board or the county? 
who wrote it. Uh, they've drafted it, I okay. believe, and um, we adopted it, and so did the sanitary district, the county. We sent it to the county. They had some issues with the language in there. That's what this meeting That's is on meeting January 11th. Okay. Then it would have to go back to all three boards, and they would have to vote on it, and you probably know how long it takes to get an agenda item on for something like that. For LACO? Or no, this is for the Board of Supervisors, I apologize, yeah. for you to have a tax share agreement with the proposed CSD. Yeah, I mean, it, it, could, it could be a short period of time or a long period of time. It depends on what come up More than a month, I would say, though, right? Yeah. 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 A couple months, probably, and yeah. it was pushed. But can can Any I just other? clarify one point in terms of your sure. question? The requirement for the agreement was from LAFCO. LAFCO is independent of right. the county. So, and they said that we, three districts, I mean, the county, uh, the sanitary district, and the parks district needed to have this agreement on property tax sharing. Uh, but the reality is there's, just to clarify, there's no property tax being shared. Zero. So uh, that's why we contested LAFCO's interpretation of, of what was needed. Okay, thank you. More than anything? Um, yeah, the sooner the better. For a public meeting? Yes, and I don't want to be drug out. Otherwise, um, come February, I want to vote. Okay, well I think you know we can direct staff to sit, work with CSD staff and so I motion, uh, uh, for the, um, I don't know what date it would be, but the date of February's board meeting, we have a vote. I think we would have to do that in January. January. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, January. Yeah, we can do that instead of that in January, beginning, but I think we could direct staff to find a solid date. It's hard, I know, end of December, beginning of January, but if we can get something on the books to get a community meeting together where we can discuss this, I think that would behoove uh, some of the decision making because I have I have tons of questions Just, and some things could that you send all of us a postcard for real that doesn't cost that much and we would actually be notified for real and that was what we should just go to the Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> no, not everybody's on Facebook. I, we, yeah. I'm making a joke. I'm agreeing with you. Knew, right? uh, we will try our best to make sure that as many people are notified as possible. Postcard would be nice. Okay, I, got, I wrote it down. The newspaper really doesn't yes, have uh, to yeah. And also, we'll try is there some reason it can't be at our January meeting? Is there uh, some reason like, it can't I think, be it'd be, I think it'd be great to keep it separate. Because of that? Just, just because of the it's forum. Really and okay. I, I mean, I'm just discussing with you. I mean, it's going to be a long heated discussion. I think that's going to be probably longer than this one. Okay. I don't necessarily want to take my time, but uh, there was a conversation I had with Jaren that LAFCO could possibly have a meeting out here in Tuolumne area specifically on this item. That would be helpful to you. Yeah, it'd be great. It's not before LAFCO yet. It's not before LAFCO, but uh, maybe like a staff update or something could be out here. I don't know what you're asking for, but... Well, it's like the county saying they're going to be having meetings out here. Oh. Like LAFCO will, will, will likely have a meeting here. They could call an in-person meeting. Therefore, it could be put on an agenda for a discussion item as well. If you want to incorporate a community in yep, that, great, I mean, you could pile that all there too as well. Or have a separate special meeting for the public, specifically sponsored <coughs> by TPRD or Sanitary. But I mean, if you included LACO in that discussion, you might be able to get one bourbon or three birds, one stone. I don't know how we'd run that joint meeting, but then um, you have LACO kind of running the show, right, as the, the for the meeting. But I mean, it's, I, I don't Sounds disagree with things. I don't know. Yeah, something to see if we can't make happen. Because I know, like the city and the county have done meetings together when they had issues that crossed over. So we'll have to look into how we can do that. Any other discussion from the board? So I take my last minute, please. Um, employee costs will, will go up. Uh, just my, my statement. I know there's a lot of conflicting information, but I mean, if you look at the numbers, they're going to go up. Um, time. Look, we've been here two and a half hours, almost three hours. Now you add on sanitary and on, add on whatever, it's, we're going to be here a long time in the future. Um, rights to tax, I know there was some conversation about that, whether a board can raise taxes or it has to go to a vote. Uh, I'm under the impression that the board can raise taxes without without people's uh, vote. Uh -huh. So that should, needs to be something that needs to be addressed in the future. Um, when I look back, I've been coming to these meetings since 2014. Um, I remember Deb Munsell, Steve Artzer, Donnie, and Missy being on the board. Um, Missy, Donnie, and Steve were constantly in arguments over this with um, Gary Annie's, per se. I've seen Darren. He's a local contractor. I think he's been scared to fight against the CSD. He voted for it. Um, because of repercussions. And you can look at Gretchen King, Cliff, and TY and Zeke need to be looked into for conflict of interest for Gary Annie's working on their projects. All right, thank you. <coughs> hey, Gretchen, are you talking about me? And <laughs> Any other board discussion? Wow. Yeah, actually, I'd like to take my minute back because if you just listen to me, there's another conflict of interest with John Perriani. I went to high school with him. 
but he doesn't work on any projects for me. I've never worked for Barry on the construction. And um, when you said employee costs will go up, as if it were a fact, these employees are amazing. I would be happy if our employee costs went up, okay? So good for that. Please bring the employee costs up. They are underpaid. They're not going to lose their jobs, as far as what I understand. And I would like to see them compensated better. So that's part of the reason I'm voting for the CSD. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So my hearing somewhat consensus that we're going to table this, have a public meeting, hopefully in January, come back at our January meeting and set potential vote for February. Is that what I'm hearing across the board? I think, yeah, I, I agree. I don't necessarily agree with you, Marty, and just the reason is trying to schedule a public meeting for the public. I would ask that you not request that on the board minutes until we have that public meeting and, and can learn more about it in the public. Well, that's why I threw it out until February. Yeah, so well, I'm just, time. right, I'm just saying sometimes, you know, with our con our scheduling conflicts and the CS sanitary district scheduling conflicts, you know, we're, we're in the heat of going, wrapping some stuff up, you know, and I'd ask you to consider our staff's time and trying to put something that big together uh, is, is all I was saying, so. And again, we got the, the holiday season coming up, which I want to make sure everybody has their time with their family, so. All right. Um, so, I'm sorry, Aaron did make a motion to withdraw, and then Gretchen had a competing motion. Yeah, my motion's dead. There's no second. No but first second. had a second. I don't know if you have to. Well, I'm I, sorry. I'm yeah, just what was Gretchen's motion? To open the session, wasn't to, to go forward as uh, To go forward with this after we have a public meeting. So I don't. Can we um, just, so can we just pull the motion and then nothing yeah. happens? Yeah. yeah. So, so or can I. You can withdraw your second. Yeah. That pretty much kills Okay, I'll withdraw my second. Okay. Do we have anyone for a second with Gretchen's motion? Motion dies due to lack of a second. Yay. <laughs> well, the only time I've ever heard that. I'm cheering for your motion. Thank you. You're doing a great um, job, Mark. <laughs> I'm knocking stuff out of my civics class. All right. So for, I don't know how we set our agenda items for the next meeting. We How just, does that just we're gonna ask what people want to do? Sometimes there's items that come on later, um, but sometimes we kind of just say, "Oh yeah, we'd like to talk about the CSD. We'd like to have a discussion on the CSD," um, which I think would be a good one to talk about that. Um, I'd like an update on those or community media reports about the light reimbursement. So that's just I wrote down a community meeting. I mean, for next month. I think that would be that would just stand alone outside of yeah. our meeting. Yes. Right. Yeah, and maybe if there's you know there will be multiple members of the of this board at that meeting. So we might want to call county council and see how we can operate that. If it has to be a joint meeting, if it doesn't, I don't know. Maybe Dave and, and your general manager, the two general yeah. managers. Yeah, Dave, Dave could work it out. I'm sure. Yeah, Dave and Ed and James can get together and figure out how how we can put that special meeting or whatever it is for the public on. And I'd like to make sure that we have um, a review of our uh, current and proposed projects because we had that on our agenda in November okay. and we went over it. But the new board members should hear where we are and. <coughs> You know, James, a chance to update any members of the public who are here and where we are on the projects that are in the works right now. Okay. Anyone else? Aaron, anything for the agenda? Marty, anything for the agenda? I don't have anything. Hear nothing else? Um, maybe, James, we just had this big meeting. Maybe we just do like a little intro to TPRD, you know, talk about the. Um, the other district that you guys are now board members on. The Economic Services, Economic Services <laughs> Committee District, whatever it's called. Included, I can follow yeah, <laughs> no. Just ex you know, explanation of that, um, and then we probably all need to do Robert Rules or order training or whatever. Uh, that's what right. and all the, the good county? stuff. Isn't the county? The county used to, and then for whatever reason they stopped. But I don't oh, know. We're, we're gonna start the, again. Are you, I was gonna say it's something that yeah, I know. February, if we throw the really suggestion good. out there, maybe. And then we'll you guys will have to do your sexual harassment training. I don't know if we're doing or not. <laughs> That's a requirement board members as well. So maybe you get them a packet. Just I, items. Yes, I think so. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Anything else as far as agenda items for next meeting? I have no. Perfect. Do I have a motion to adjourn? All motion. Do I have a second? Second. Good job. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Being adjourned at twenty one forty seven or twenty forty seven.